what evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. <laughs> Yeah, my mouse. It's moving around the screen. There it is. It's a sneaky little mouse. everyone how's it going out there well let's see this here so titan says hello hey everybody hey titan only had one technical glitch i had echo going i had to kill it uh, me you're remuting it was it was me i had the other window open there and it was back feeding on it there at the beginning that's okay I've been told to shut up a few times. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's check everyone. That th you missed in your presentation, young man. Huh? True. Mickey Mouse boots. Oh, Mickey Mouse shoes. Oh, man. Oh, well. Not shoes. Boots. Boots. <laughs> no, the big difference. Hmm. Mickey Mouse shoes is what Goofy wears. Mickey Mouse boots are what liquid oxygen haulers wear. Ah. Yeah, I know there are more shoes out there, types of shoes out there than what I showed, but so before we jump into it, let's take a look at who's all here. All right, so we got Phelan Clan Wolf, the Evil Twin, aka the Shadow, Tibor is here, Wide Family Farm, Blooming in Place, of course, Southern Ohio Prepping here. Nope, figment of your imagination. Yep, I know. Julie's here, Heaven's Essentials. Uh, G -d 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 uh, Cecilia Jansen's here, Michael 58. Down here, okay, let's, let's clear something up. Hyde family is it Hyde or Wide family? Which way is it properly pronounced? So, those of us up here on screen don't look like absolute goofballs when we try to pronounce your name and we don't know if we're getting it correct or not. And we're just going, yeah. let's well, throw a dart and see if it sticks. Wide, Hyde. And hello to everybody. Hello yep. to everybody. <laughs> Tibor, yep. Wide. Wide. Okay. All righty. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. Now, um, it came up on uh, on the PP&E, on the uh, uh, personal protective equipment um, wide stream back uh, several weeks about a certain shoe 
a certain fu form uh, function of shoes, the steel-toed shoes, and um, that for like, like the military, they're designed so they just something falls on it, it'll just it'll cut, it'll cleanly cut the toe, and they can reattach the toes later. I thought well, I was kicking some butt. Well, that too. Okay. But this one here, this last one we looked at there that ended the slideshow, that <laughs> is a steel worker's uh, work boot. It's uh, got steel toe up across here, and then from this point up is a steel plate within there. This so the steel plate on the bottom rests on that toe. One of the guys I was working construction with well, used to be a steel worker, and he wore those. And everyone gave him a bad time about the, the funky look of his shoes until someone dropped a uh, six-inch piece of ductile iron pipe on it, and it just bounced off. Hey, he, he said a few words, you know, like, you stupid idiot, what the heck are you doing? You know, but they noticed, you know, it didn't break his foot because of the way this is designed. It's made for heavy stuff hitting on there and bouncing off because the steel toe in this boot is about three times as thick as the steel toe in most, uh, you know, military spec boots. Another benefit to those, you wear those long enough, you'll have some pretty thick thighs. <laughs> and if you kick somebody with them, they're going to go up three feet in the air. So, uh, let me go ahead and escape out of that and take it back up to the beginning here. And we'll look at stuff. So, pictures. Ooh, pretty pictures. All right, uh, white family says my husband's has Carolinas, and they're ne nearly as good as the Red Wing. Oh yeah, hey, farm all fanatic just jumped in the house. Boom! Yeah, Can you hear me now? <laughs> all right. So, um, talking about you know, you know, that's why I even put that that one boot here, right here in the middle, because I mean. Those are very expensive boots, but they will protect your feet against just about anything. But foot protection here, you know, there's a, a, a like the um, scripture says, there's a time and a, a season for everything. There's a time and a place to wear what type of shoes. I will flip flop on the screen. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dakota and family. <laughs> I have one suggestion for flip flop makers. That say that are so called tactic cool, they need to carry bare minimum a 15 round magazine for 1911 45 ACP. If they cannot carry said magazine, one in each flip flop, they not tactic cool. They just <laughs> flip flops. Okay. Hey, Holly Ridge. Hey, KBL Texas. Hey. Hey, Chris. All right. So. Yeah, I started out with the uh, so we're going to talk about all the mm -hmm. different types of shoes, and yeah. So the first thing was flip flops, really. And believe it or not, I'm going to. I can't even. Well, let me get a little more light on me here, so I can lighten myself ah. up here. Really? Ta-da! Okay. Um, flip flops, actually, as they're light and they are functional. And you should consider putting a pair in your emergency bags. The so reason that's the correct option. Shower flip flops are for shower communal communal showers only. All right. Uh, basically, and that's what I was going to go for. If you have to take a shower at, at some campsite, I mean camp campground where they have the showers, everybody goes to. Yeah, you want to be wearing flip flops so you don't get athlete's foot. The only other time for flip flops is when you just uh, walking around the house and you uh, don't, you know, you're just, you know, getting up whatever, and you know you got kids and they're always leaving Legos around. Flip flops are Lego protection. I can't personally stand them. I, I, I my brother loves them. Uh, my wife loves them. My daughter loves them. Uh, I have, a, I have something else for the communal showers, and we'll get to that here in a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> Tibor, I'm not wearing flip-flops. Hey, if you're going to be down on Wes's Texas band, you got to wear flip-flops, remember? <laughs> and we're not going to say what the rest of you, that, that no. little costume is. No. All right. Um, so let's move off of flip-flops here. 
Now, before I move off and change the slide here, let's think about this. Where do a lot of people work in high density population zones? Business offices. Sisters. Business offices. Hey, and they got all sorts of nice and business you, shoes. You put a $2,000 pair of shoes up front. That's not very nice of you. You need to start off with the low dollar stuff first. Well, those are $2,000 pair of shoes. Dang. Um, yeah. <laughs> I used to wear these things from Red Wing. Not me. The, mo the worst I've ever wore as far as a dress shoe is a penny loafer. That's yeah. it. And so, I actually had the penny in the tongue. Yeah. But yeah, so there's all sorts of uh, different, you know, work shoes and stuff around. Julie, and you're, you're from California, and all Californians love flip-flops because they got big beaches. We don't have big beaches here. We have no need for flip-flops. Actually, here in Idaho, they have the sand dunes up uh, by um, uh, up by um, Pastor Rigby, uh, Rex, Pastor Rexburg, just up by uh, Rexburg. Gil, have yeah. you ever wore flip-flops at a sand dune? It's like putting sandpaper between your big toe and your <laughs> next toe over. By the time yeah. you're done, after two hours of walking, you have blisters there that you've never known you had skin in that position. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't wear flip-flops. But a lot of all my cousins, it's like, why are you guys, that hurts. Anyways, I'd rather go barefoot at the beach than wear flip-flops. And they all wore flip-flops. Um, see, all sorts of nice uh, loafers and stuff that, and stuff that they wear at the uh, – an office place. Now, all these shoes I've just shown here, if you had to bug out and uh, uh, your car wasn't going to start or the uh, roads were damaged where you couldn't drive and you had to hoof it, how oh, far man. How far do you think you're going to get in this $2,000 pair of shoes? I hear snickering <laughs> or the uh, $39 pair of uh, wingtips from... Uh, Tarjay. Well, believe it or not, I used to have to wear shoes like that on a constant basis. So I would get relatively far. The yeah. question is, are you going to climb any hills in those? And the answer to that is a resounding heck no. Because <laughs> the first time you try stepping on a rock and your foot slips because you have no traction at the bottom of it, you're SOL. Oh, even worse. If you had to do this a month and a half ago out of New York or, you know, someplace where there's a lot of snow. Slip, slide in a way. Hey, oh, hey. Hey. hey, Blue Healer. My boots have two and a half inch heels. <laughs> well, you, you contemplate that thought. I'm going to grab something for visual display effects. All right. So um, that's, you know, all those shoes basically are for office place work and stuff like that. Now we're going to shift a little bit here. Anybody have anything else? A uh, T-bar. I've seen grown men in flip-flops. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, there are some shoes I just don't get. All right. Deck shoes. These things are a, little, a bit better than the, uh, um, the dress shoes. Of course, these are the ones that everybody remembers. Uh, Miami Vice. This is what Don Johnson always wore around in that. Him and uh, Detective Tubbs. But then you get water shoes. Now, water shoes are cool, guys. Uh, they give you a lot more protection than the um, flip-flops. But you can still wear them in the showers and stuff. And the last 10 years, this is what I wore when I went to scout camp was these. Because then I could walk, actually walk from the camp over to the showers without my feet getting totally dirty again. But yeah, there are a lot of styles of flip-flops and I just can't get this guys. Yeah. Heaven essentials. You're right. There's no uh, support in deck shoes, but sometimes, you know, uh, they're comfortable. Other times not so comfortable, but I, I don't get the toe thing. You know, having shoes with individual things for your toes. Not everybody's toes are the same size. Even if they have the same si wear the same size shoe, they got different sized toes. 
Exactly, joining the fitness. I mean, it's just like, what? Really? And you got semi toe shoes. And you got the really heavy duty rubberized toe shoes. What are you going to do? Climb a mountain like a monkey? I mean, I'm sorry. I just, I just don't get these. Now, um, a lot of a lot of the scouts were uh, um, the one up here on the upper right or the lower left, you know, around scout camp, you know, when they're just you know uh, relaxing and stuff. Then there's the famous Crocs. Um, it's a different style of Croc than what my wife wears. Let me add here. So yeah, shower shoes do have their uh, place or the water shoes. Um, if you're um, going to swim, if you're swimming in a in a, uh, a stream or something, you don't know how many fish hooks are in the bottom of that stream unless you go barefoot. And there are too many downstream from the scout camp. Too many kids wound up stepping in uh, on, on in the sand down there in the water and coming up with a fish hook in their um, foot. So that's why we started making them all wear some sort of sole shoe other than flip flops in the streams when they went down to go swimming. Okay. Heaven essential set agrees. Well, bug, uh, water shoes would definitely be in her bug out bag to cross creeks with. Yeah, you're exactly, you know, un, you got to plan out your footwear and unsensible footwear in the wrong situation is really bad. All right. Where are we here? The next one here. Now I've seen these around. These are, and I see men and women wearing those all over the place. And I look yeah. at them like they're stupid. They are. Yeah. Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, Tibor, my wife has a pair of keen she got for hiking too. All right. So now we go move on from that. We get into, hey, everybody's favorite. Oh, you, know, you know, quote the tennis runners, the tennis shoes, your running shoes, your cross trainers, whatever basketball shoes, whatever you want to call them. All right. Yeah. You don't have kangaroos on there though. People my generation remember kangaroo shoes. That was after I, I was, you know, I didn't we had red we had red ball and we had um maybe it was just an East Coast thing and you West Coasters don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I can't oh, remember what the other brand was. But see, kangaroos were notorious for having pockets on them. Ah. Uh, Good place to stash cash. Yeah. All right. So we've covered, you know, this, you know, uh, we've covered a lot of sensible shoes here. Um, but also even the, even these uh, tr uh, cross trainers and tennis shoes and stuff. Worst case, you can wear them in the water. Not exactly good for some of the two hundred dollar and two hundred fifty dollar ones or whatever, but uh, but yeah. Hey gunslinger. Hey gunslinger. See, I I, I went a step ahead because mm -hmm. I got these. And let me switch it back here. <laughs> and as you can tell, that's a little too small for my big old feet. I have actual combat boots for Charles. They got cool. Curve sole, memory foam in there. He loves them, but we don't wear them much because these are our, those are his bug out boots. All right. Um, so we're going to shift over to a, a, a little different type boot here or shoe footwear. Come on. Anybody remember wearing these as kids over your tennis shoes? God. <laughs> memories. Uh, <laughs> yeah, memories. I'm going to get a massive migraine headache. Hey, Howie. <laughs> Hey, Howie. Yeah. So, yeah, I remember those type of things. Uh, of course, mine were, mine were a different color. I never had the yellow ones. Yeah. He had the memories the, of everybody going, ah, look at his footwear. <laughs> yeah. Then you had the, just the regular slip on ones that didn't your shoe couldn't fit inside of. But I, we had these type with the, with the buckles on them for. Uh, Herman boots. Yeah. That's what we call them. Would you call them again? Fireman's boots because of fireman the boots. Okay. Yeah. Um, Galoshes is what we called them. And so, yeah, that's more like the type I had. You know, these are the high dollar shiny ones and stuff. These are the uh, cheap uh, at the time. These yeah, were the uh, Montgomery Wards. Sears. 
that Hunter too. Woolworth or Woolworth, whatever it was. JC yeah. Woolworth. Yeah. And then you get the little bit bigger ones. And then you get the ones that are actually more like shoes or boots, oh. slip on boots with uh, higher tops on them. But they all have, you know, so no bread bags over, no bread bags over your socks. <laughs> oh, we had to do that a few times too. Yeah, I remember that, Tibor. Yeah. All right, next one's here. Yeah, now we're getting the high tech ones with the with the uh, special waterproof foamy stuff on them. Neoprene. Yeah. And then we go to the ones even higher tops. Thigh boots. Yeah. Fisherman's friend. Yeah, thigh boots. Hip waders. Those are chaps. <laughs> They're separate. I was thinking the same thing about uh, 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 from uh, Steve's. Uh, mm -hmm. They could wear this as part of their uh, uniform. <laughs> and that way, they get, we're about to flip flop stepping in shit, literally. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're, they're going to be behind me and my horses. They're going to be stepping in, you know what? Yeah. Root apples. Mm -hmm. And then you got your, uh, your deep waders. <laughs> And then you're now this I don't get. Somebody please explain this to me. A person is out there, you know, you know, waist deep in the water. I want an water. honest explanation. I can give why it. why is the part that's underwater camouflage? Are the fish supposed to swim into you and bump you? No. <laughs> it's due to reflectivity. Uh, the multiple colors limit the amount of light that's reflected back into the water. Uh, Therefore, the fish literally don't see it. They're not going to bump into you, obviously, because they have other sensory. But if you wear standard black, the water will reflect off that black, causing a shadow. That does not cause the same shadow. Therefore, it, even though it looks stupid to us, because it, why would you wear camouflage? It does have a purpose. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then we're going to another type of... Uh, so another time, going back a little bit, this actually may have been, should have been back with the uh, galoshes and stuff, but this is something else to go over your feet for whatever. There's these type of little zip-on booties and these little clear plastic zip-on booties. Medical booties. And we got medical booties. Yep. No, he didn't say boot D. He said boot T. Get y'all's minds out the gutter into the sewer with the rest of us. You just made me think of a movie uh, from years and years ago. The star of which was in the movie before he was the original RoboCop. And that movie was uh, Buckaroo Banzai. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> it's Boutte. It's Boutte. <laughs> Anyways. And then here's uh, some heavier duty ones. Where they have more spills. We have to worry about spills and stuff. Whereas. These will not protect against moisture, but these will. I hate to tell you, but the way she's dressed, it ain't going to protect crap. Exactly. That, but is it's a absolute, that is an absolute lesson on what not to do. But it's so fashionable. Sorry. That sounded way too coming from you, Gil. Hey, I, I spent a lot of time poking fun at Valley Girls, being from California. Help me get me with a spoon. Hey, Mama Z, did see you sneak in there. Hey. All right. So um, now we're getting into some uh, actual type uh, footwear that you might want to be wearing if you have to uh, hit the road on your feet. Now there brings back a song. Hit the road, Jack. Don't come back no more, no more, no more. Yep. And then these, this is the yuppie version. Yeah, I wouldn't wear those. <laughs> the first rock you hit, the upper seam will split. Yeah, yeah. So you got your 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 um your hiker version, your yuppie version, and your hunter version. Okay, now this here, who now in the chat? All right, I want someone to name this. This has this type of boot has a specific name. Most people don't know, and they look at me crazy when I tell them, but when they look it up online, they find it's correct. What is the name of this boot? <clears throat> well, I'm sorry. It reminds me of the old nursery rhyme 
of the old, little old lady who lived in the shoe. Yep. I mean, it's the same kind of picture style. All right, uh, CJ, good to have you in here. Uh, semi close, uh, T Bor. Holly Ridge said fire jumper. Yeah. I'll give you a hint, guys. There's a metal uh, bracket that goes alongside the boot underneath of it. It has straps that goes around it. It has a little spike off the side. Wouldn't that kind of hurt the horse? Nope. They're lineman boots for climbing to power poles. poles. Yeah. Pole climber. Yeah, oh, Holly Ridge beat you. Said it before I got finished off. You had it in. Yeah, it popped it in there. Yeah, lineman boots. Now, now logger boots are very similar, except on the bottom they got studs on the bottom, so they don't. Uh, if they're on logs, they don't slip and stuff. But yeah, I have a pair of these re red wing logger boots that I bought before I got married, and they look almost brand new because I've as pricey as they were back then. They're like twice as much now. But yeah, these things have lasted me, like I said, over, I've been married over uh, 32 years, so, or 30, will we'll be 32 years this year. All right, where am I at? I lost, okay, there we go. And then you have your. What on earth? Your, your uh, Walmart version of a work boot. That's a cross between a slipper, a cow petty fell on your foot. <laughs> yeah, well, this, yeah, this is probably probably a twenty nine dollar boot at Walmart. I wouldn't put that on my worst enemy and ask him to go walk across the grass field, let alone wear that in a SHTF event. I right. wish that kind of pain on my enemies. All right, yeah, uh, this is a Dickies brand, which is a step up from it, and I see a lot of guys wearing this. Dickies not too bad. Yep, their and pants then, uh, are better than their shoes. Yeah. Then DeWalt had to get into the shoe business too instead of staying in the tool business. I agree. Let me slide this up here so I get up here. All right. And now we're, we're beginning to shift. This is still a work boot, but can you guess what type of work boot this is? It's a cowboy Carhartt work boot. Yep. Now we're getting to the big C. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Carhartt, but yeah, that's you're getting into the uh, farmer cowboy boot work boots. And this is, uh, this is, not, this is a, Working boot, not a dress boot. Yep, Although it's a, a it, it's a it's a it's a fancier, it's you know a, a little bit fancier um, work boot. But oh, by the way, I don't know if you can tell it. It says Tony Llama on it, which means it's a real cowboy boot. And here's another one here. Also, this is the three R by Tony Llama. Yes, I'm prejudiced. And hey, that's a wannabe cowboy boot. No, no, no. Hang on. Hey, it looks very similar. Hence the reason why the picture is in the screen, the screen here. You made your piece back in. Good. You missed it. What? What'd you say? I said, hence the reason the picture is in the stream. No, actually, I found it by, I, I didn't realize it was, I, you know, matched this one here. So after I, oh, oh, wait a minute, that looks like mine. Okay, now you're getting a little bit fancier. No, fancy is a set, a set of eel skin boots. How about it's ostrich? $2,000 a pair. Yeah. How about ostrich? No. Actually, there's a place over in Indiana, and I can't remember exactly what the name of the town is off the top of my head. I can look it up real quick. But All right, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting hearts, I'm getting hearts from Texas here. All yeah. right, yeah. All right. Anybody want to guess what's on this boot? Rattler. Yep, rattlesnake. Yeah, where am I here? Uh, over here, went too far. There we go. And the and this is probably one of the fancier uh, Tony Lama ones. It's this is the this is a dress boot. To go over mm. pants over it and stuff, but it looks look at the toe here. It's kind of like a uh then up like the um the brogues shoes. That's a ladies' boot. 
Actually, it said men's when I, on the photo. Let me catch a guy wearing that. I'll, <laughs> I'll rip his man card off him. It's a doggone fashion. I don't know what happened. <laughs> okay. So uh, now we're getting into another type of boot here, which, which I totally forgot when I made the uh, that, um, the picture at the beginning, you know, the, the collage at the beginning. Hey, Laurie. All hail. Well, except for uh, Grumpy. All hail, Queen of the North. So uh, now we're getting into uh, cold weather boots. So all sorts of different ones set up different ways. Gee, you think this might be for a snowmobile? Nah. <laughs> That's the name of the submarine you're supposed to wear them on. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then there's, of course, there's the, the, uh, the high fashion uh, winter snow boots. Hey, Lori just knighted us all. We're all knighted. <laughs> just giving you a hard time, Lori. <laughs> all right. So, uh, you know, some other ones here. Oh. Now, I didn't couldn't find a picture of the, the boots I have uh, for winter. They oh, look stainless. Yes. They, they look similar on the bottom like this, but the top is a uh, a, uh, a nylon uh, with a uh, zipper on the side and overlapping stuff on it. And it has a, a half inch wool felt liner that's removable from it. Yep, I had those as a kid too. Yeah. Gunslinger, I said that to him earlier and he just kind of laughed at me. Don't forget to make the military Mickey Mouse boots. Yeah. Um, <coughs> it's also what oxygen haulers wear yeah. for their feet when loading and unloading oxygen, liquid oxygen. Yeah. Uh, those didn't pop up right away when I was pulling them up. Otherwise, I would have pulled those up. Now we're getting into what do you wear inside your shoes? And again, we got the toes. So you're wearing toe socks inside of toe shoes. <laughs> Only in California. And But these are wool. These are 100% wool socks. Well, supposedly 100% wool. I think they got a lot of synthetic in there as well. And you got some other uh, tabby, cotton. Those are tabby socks. Yeah. Patterned after the Japanese tabby boot. Yeah. These are listed as cotton, and these toe ones here on the on the picture thing said it had I didn't it didn't show the other side, but supposedly it has a gel sole on it for uh, comfort and support. Remember, now we're into stuff that's really to protect your feet inside your foot foot protection. <laughs> Big dreams, same here. I was born in Glendale, California. Uh-uh, never wore that. Now, unfortunately, I must say that the uh, my daughter has worn them, and she was born in California, and my wife, who was born in California, the staff sergeant, has worn, worn them. But, hey, woman's prerogative. Yeah, never forget that. Yep. <clears throat> For your toes. Now, there's a bunch of little, other little things that you can get like this. I only wanted to grab the one here. But basically, for um, if you have, you know, they ask you to have some that have rigid stuff on them for uh, correcting toe um, shapes and stuff and give support while you're wearing them inside of shoes. Yes, they do some weird stuff over there. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got our, our good military green uh, wool socks. Phew, I can smell them over here. This is the rag wool socks. And your plain cotton socks. And then, of course, you have the special one, which is all synthetic, all whatever. And if you're a, a yuppie, if you've got to have the Gore-Tex. <laughs> Sock liners, so you know, go you know, socks you wear inside your boots. Yeah, uh huh. If you're hiking in the weather in the winter and you have shoes that aren't waterproof, 
Those are a godsend, I'll tell you. Yeah. Keep your feet dry. <laughs> All right. Now, the next thing we're going to move on to is, is, is something that doesn't go on your feet. It goes under your feet. Ah, uh, cushion. Cushion. Oh, yeah. Especially you happen to be wearing one of those funky shoes from the very beginning called uh, work sho uh, called uh, office shoes, dress shoes. And then they have the ones that just have the heel support and a little arch support only. And, and the then there's angling off the end going, help me, help me. And, and then you have the customized ones you can get with all sorts of different layers and stuff. And for the uh, call, they actually, these are actual, actual orthotics that you got to go to a doctor to get a prescription to do and get. I tell you, though, if you go have a good uh, podiatrist and they get you, set you up and do the cast and everything, oh, you will be in heaven when you get your pair. Now, uh, I'm going to be treading on dangerous water, and I apologize uh -oh. to all the women in here uh -oh. for the. Uh, yeah, Lori's already. Lori's already. While I'm ducking. Why well, Lori said it, but hey, um, this is not just California. This is New York as well. <sighs> I'm sorry, but those only serve one natural purpose holes in the toes of the guys that tick them off exactly yeah hey robertson belly and actually that would go you could put that through the thigh of a guy that was ticking you off but the problem is look at the deformity pain on this yeah it's the, not good for your back it's not good for the ball of the foot. It's not good for the arch. It's not good for the ankle. It's not good for the knees. It's not good for the hips. It's not good for the back. Yeah. It just causes everything to go out of cattywampus all the way up. My neck hurts just looking at them things. Take them away. Take them away. Yeah. And now you go up even higher. You add a couple of inches underneath the toes. I couldn't. I mean, geez. And even more. I mean, look how, I mean, that is a, that is a weapon. And it's butt ugly. Yeah. It's a steel weapon. You know, what's yeah. even uglier thigh boots that look like that at the bottom. I'm sorry. I just don't like the looks of them. Thigh boots that look like, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Is, is that part of Wes's uh, outfit? I have no idea. And I hope not. And then there are, there are still, shoes I, I just had to put that in i could i mean excuse me hold on but those make absolutely positively no sense those have three litter rubber balls on top stands a person of at least five foot eight inches tall so they feel like they're six inch six feet tall because that's usually who wears them the most are the shorter women because they want to feel tall and empowered, which that's it, 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 on them. But can you imagine trying to walk on those and one of those little rubber balls falls off? <laughs> I like Lori's comment. Oh, sweet Lord, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, not slip until one of them little rubber balls falls off. Then they just slip sliding away to your face. And look at those. I'm not sure those are rubber balls. I think those may be plastic. Even worse. That <laughs> means then it's going to be off by that much when you go to step on it. And and, or if you hit a wet spot on a, uh, a shiny floor. <laughs> now, you said the only ones that wear high heels and stuff like that are shorter women. There was this lady at church. She was 6'1". And she always wore platforms with eight inch stiletto heels. I would politely ask her why. Does she think that gets her closer to God? Nope. I don't know why either, but yeah. Okay. And then uh, so the next one down here. Come on. All right, guys. There's your whole meal. <laughs> Hey, those actually serve a purpose for people who are putting drywall in. <laughs> yeah, homemade the, the, the stilt boots and stuff for drywallers 
There was a bunch of different pictures on that, but I just decided to throw this one in here and let it come out. Yeah, I know what those are for. I've done more a pair once or twice in my life. Yeah, but these are homemade ones. Yeah, mine weren't. Mine were real. Yeah. And they were also about three foot tall. Yeah. So add three foot to my already six foot six tall height. And uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's a wee will wobble, wait to wobble down. Yeah. And then wrapping it up again with the final picture is the steel mill, steel toed with the steel um, arch support above it, uh, the protection above it. <laughs> Heaven's Essential says D DIY heels. <laughs> But, all right, so, <laughs> I'm just catching some of these back here. Uh, Tibor's comment, holy crap, I was kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just catching up on some Hey, Lori, <laughs> you should know, eating cauliflower during a live stream with me in it is bad for your health. But hey, Lori. All right. All right, guys. So, hey, Lori. Lori, see, see, Lori. Kitties. All right. So, yeah. Um, but sorry, guys. I don't see how, you know, a, a short little heel. I can see why some we women may feel they have to wear those in the office. My wife doesn't. She hates heels. Just because a guy is wearing that does not mean, ladies, you have to wear that well, or that. Close to one, somebody else just comment in here, and I don't remember which one said it. <clears throat> um, some offices, some places require women to wear heels. It's mandatory. Yeah. Uh, I Cecilia just don't Jansen, know that yeah. size is the issue. I think it's the functionality of the heel that's more important in my personal opinion yeah there we go yeah exactly um nothing then yeah there, there was there was there, there was a lot there was a law firm over in san francisco that required all the females to wear at least a three inch heel um until they, until they hired somebody and when she didn't wear heels they threatened her She's now a um, uh, senior partner in the law firm, and heels are no longer required. Can I bring up the next topic? What's the next topic? Cover your stinky, finky, foody, nasty smelling feet with some soap, something. Go visit Heaven's Essentials. <laughs> I got some soap from her. Well, in a package, your house will smell better. So just along, how your feet are going to feel. Along that same line, talking about that, yes. Foot powders, something else to protect your feet and others around you. You know, the good to get the good foot powders, they absorb the uh, moisture. Oh, Jerry. Whoa, 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 what I missed? You missed Jerry. There it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Now I do have all right. I, I since Jerry said I, I gotta say something. Back when I was in um, junior high, it was the fashion rage for even guys. And this is we're talking nineteen uh, uh, seventy seventy one seventy two. You know, or, and, or not seventy two. Uh, uh, 69, 70, 71, yeah, 71. <clears throat> Back when uh, John Travolta was doing his thing, I was was going to find a picture of that. I forgot to put that up there. With the uh, bell bottom pants and hey, the plat the, the the guys had platform shoes with just a little bit of a you know higher Disco platform shoes. heel. <sighs> Disco shoes with little mirrors attached to the sole, so when you dance, the lights sparkled everywhere. Yes, I yeah. remember those. Yeah, I grew up in Detroit during disco fever. I seen yeah. all kinds of fancy footwear back then. 
It yeah. brings back horrid memories. <laughs> yeah. The ones I the ones I had, I had two pair, one brown, one gray, and they did not have mirrors on them. Yes, poodle skirts as well. <laughs> well, poodle skirts was a little bit older. So that was back in the uh, 50s. Hey, 50s. Early 60s. Yeah. That was um, happy days. Ow, 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 ow. Can we say ow one more time? Ow. There we go. Wide family, I'm not saying anything else. I am done talking. <laughs> All right. Like he says, it, it doesn't have to be good to be classic. Yeah, some, some of the most classic things are but ugly. We've already discussed that, Jerry. And there are some boots that should be left on walls and not worn on feet. Yeah. And that, you know, what Jerry just said there remind, reminded me of um, a certain song and a certain singer, Nancy Sinatra. These boots are made for walking. Okay. Hey, I grew up when parachute pants were the hot item. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Julie said it too. Parachute yeah. pants. To go to sagebrush. Oh, God. How many people remember the source store sagebrush to buy clothes? One of the most expensive stores in my youth. Yeah. Now, there were two different types of zipper pants that I knew of. One that had zippers run up the side all the way up. And then the other ones, which ran from front to back. We're not talking. No, I'm not even going to say the word. We're not talking that kind of stuff. Yeah. But anyways, let's get back over to what we have up here. Thing talking about foot, your feet and stuff. Um, you got stuff like the, uh, you know, odors, you know, the ever famous, you know, odor eaters. And then the, uh, you know. Destin next before odor eat was around before odor eaters. And then we have good old Dr. Scholl's. The most important thing about all these is that they um, help to absorb. If you get the good stuff, they help to absorb moisture and stuff. Um, <laughs> my dad used to use a, uh, when he wore his cowboy boots with no thin, thin, who, who, what? I just tell Jerry, No. <laughs> okay jerry uh, no, if, if i was gonna dance to anything it would be dancing to disco duck not can't touch this all right hang on i got i got to throw uh one up here where echo sandals because they were the only ones i found that mesquite thorns would not go through okay All right, I'll take care, Chris. Take care. Hey, Chris, yeah. stop. Freeze. Get a hold of Heaven's Essentials. You will not regret it. Now, a point on this. My younger brother, two years younger than me, as a teenager and into his mm -hmm. 20s, had feet so, stank so bad when he was in his locked room and took his shoes off in a minute or so in the front room we were gagging found out that after he got married his wife got after a while tried to put different socks i found out that if he wore wool socks the stink <laughs> went away the he was he liked his synthetics and the synthetics breed bacteria. So by the time you know afternoon, by the time the afternoon rolled around, they were you know uh, they were so toxic. Yeah, he could we could have used them as weapons of mass destruction. Now, see, I consider myself relatively fortunate. I can wear a pair of boots that don't breathe, a pair of cotton socks all day long, and my feet don't stink. My son, on the other hand, can wear tennis shoes that breathe, cotton socks. And his feet reek after 10 minutes. Yeah. Bad enough to where my neighbor sends him back home. Could you please wash his feet? I did. Yeah. yeah. 
Now, there are different types of the foot powder. Some of them are just for the moisture. And oh, like, as I say, like my dad, when he wore his, uh, his Tony Llamas and the thin socks, he liked his boots really tight and he'd put talcum powder in there so his foot would slide in. And then it also helped dry stuff out. But um, the, some, some of the foot powders you stuff, you can get the medicated foot powders that actually help kill bacteria. All right, Lori. Okay, Lori, see you in a bit. <clears throat> she doesn't want to choke on any more cauliflower. <laughs> we have her laughing too hard. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, guys and gals, when I grew up, we had something in our medicine cabinet that was very good for our feet. Um, basically, uh, we went to a... Uh, as kids, we went to a, uh, where was it, uh, down by uh, Santa Barbara to some beach thing. And we all went into the shower house afterwards to wa wash off. And we did not have flip-flops. And so we picked up a, a athlete's foot. But the one thing we, uh, we used at the time that actually helped kill athlete's foot really good was Asorbine Jr. Now, this is where I get very disappointed. Now, you, this is the old bottle here I have over here. It says sore muscle, uh, sore aching muscles, arthritis, pain, athlete's foot. On the new stuff, uh, sore muscles, arthritis, pain, where the heck is the athlete's foot? They took out the main ingredient that helped kill athlete's foot. So... Now, don't worry, uh, here. I got something to bring up at the toward the end of this because he hasn't mentioned it yet, and he doesn't have it his like his little all right thingy here. So yeah, they do have a special different one that's you know supposedly I'm not sure how new this uh, fo these photos are that show show the new one that say just athlete's foot on it specifically. But now before we actually started buying Absorbing Junior as a kid. My dad had the original Absorbean, which is a horse liniment. Mm -hmm. And that stuff, you had uh, you had any athletes with the fungus on your foot, you put it on uh, just a little bit on there with a Q-tip. Oh, you were going, oh, and your toes trying to wiggle your toes as fast as they could. But that stuff was gone in five minutes. All right. What do you talk about? What, what, what do you uh, want to put up there? What's he talking about? Are you done with all your stuff? Uh, well, I'm going to give you a yeah. chance to come up with it. If you if you do, then I can shut up. But if not, yeah, go ha ha. Yeah, pretty much. Let's see if I can dig through this rat's nest. I keep stuff sitting next to me all the time. Yeah, right. you know well, yeah. But then here, yeah, I will throw something up there while you're digging. There are different types of foot fungus. Okay, I got to mute the mic because I got to move stuff. All right. So while he's muting that, I'm just going to go ahead and bump this up a little bit. One, two, three. Yeah, so you got regular athlete's foot and the crusty stuff between the toes. And then you get the toenail fungus crap. So, uh, wide family, I use Ben Gay. Junior. It's a little guy. It's a junior. It's a junior? It's a junior. See, they put Junior at the end of it. I can't see anything. No, on there, comment. He said he uses Ben Gate Junior. Ben Gate Junior? Yeah. Ah, junior. junior. Yes. Now, the women will know about this little item, but I'm going to tell you something, guys. You uh, need to consider it too. A little stone for your feet to keep the calluses off, to keep the dead skin off. If you don't take care of your feet, they ain't going to take care of you. Yeah. So you didn't think of that, did you? Well, mm -hmm. I actually, actually, my daughter has a special one, a little uh, sanding scoop that's kind of curved, and she's been using that on hers. And my wife has a pumice stone about that big around, about that thick with a brush on one side, and she uses that in the shower. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I kind of slipped my mind because I don't have to use any of that crap. Sorry, stuff. Yeah, now, because we're in good times. But in bad times, you're not going to be able to wash your socks as often. 
your yeah. shoes are going to get a lot more wore out your feet are going to start suffering more you're going to start developing calluses on your feet yeah. trench foot always a wonderful thing ask any soldier who's been out in the field for eight straight weeks yeah now i was hoping that um anthony uh, Pimento prepared to be in here to pop up here because he is he likes talking about his boots and stuff um being a marine and i was hoping maybe possibly uh um steve would come by and get up here and help us as well but i don't see him but um so uh dave you want to tell him about uh, what you were telling me beforehand that you're about, crazy and i'm a lunatic no about boot camp. The other subject the boot oh. camp oh well here's two simple sentences that you should know basic training boots suck the first thing most people do if they've been to a training center where they encounter uh, paratroopers of any branch is they go out and buy jump boots. They are the most comfortable, very durable boot you can get, and they breathe quite well. Any other hard military boot is just a POS. <clears throat> Oh, Cecilia. Ah, that sounds uh, dangerous. No, no, no. Not with these shaky old hands. <laughs> oh, there went the artery. Yes, uh, I wish I still had my jump boots. They wouldn't fit me now, but I wish I still had them because I could turn around and sell them and buy a new pair. Or you could um, save them for uh, Charles. No, I already got Charles good boots. Yeah, but he's these still growing. Boots. Those are Delta boots. They ain't cheap. That's why I don't have a pair of them because I had to buy him a pair. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cut your toenails or you'll never have a pair of socks either. <laughs> you know, yeah. Daddy, you're going to learn how to sew real quick every time your toenails cut your socks out in half. Wow. Or, if you're, or if you turn over in bed and you accidentally uh, scratch your Put against your your uh, calf, and all of a sudden you have uh, four lacerations going down. Your calf looks like a uh, jungle cat went and attacked you. Was Gunslinger in here when I showed my boots? Mm -hmm. I think okay. so. Jungle boots aren't bad. As a matter of fact, if you go to a military surplus, most of the boots you see are jungle style boots. Yeah. It's, hard, it's rare to find a true pair of jump boots because the guys that get those usually don't let them go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why I don't go to pedicures and my wife doesn't go to pedicures anymore because, you know, or of course, maybe it's just California. But uh, too many people were getting uh, infections from the uh, places that did pedicures. Yeah, if you're on the ground a lot, jungle boots are nice. But the when I got a basic and was getting ready to come home, <coughs> I bought a pair of jump boots. Yeah. And even to this day, I've not found anything more comfortable at least for me and my stature than a pair of jump boots. Yeah. Yeah. Most of my boots, even I keep my boots, even they're falling apart and that's what I got on. Cause out there. Um, some of my favorite boots are not, but they're not like uh, the waffle stomper ones. They're more smooth. Um, I started getting the uh, red right. wing, the red wing boots that are, have the, um, non waffle base on them but they got the rubber soles on them and they got the non uh slip soles and uh because i worked in a in a, in a um, construction machine shop for a while where i got all the oil hydraulic oil spilling and the uh everything else and you know even the waffle stompers unless you had the, the really expensive soles on them would slip but you get the the, the uh red wing uh non-slip ones they work great yeah, I, just, I hated non-slip shoes, especially when I worked at Waffle House. Non-slip shoes, oil grease resistant. Walk across the floor in Waffle House flat. Oh, 
Shoes ain't slip resistant. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, of course, you know, let's see. The last time I bought a pair of them was 15 years ago. And they were $285 then. And I still have them. And I wear them, for, and I'll, I'll wear them a lot. Okay, when camping. Yeah, you learn what works for you quick, yeah. T-board. That's TMI. Too T much information. I think he's pur purposely trying to get me laughing. Well, hey, Lori's not here eating cauliflower, so laughing right now is pointless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was trying to get us laughing. Oh. Uh, I just shake my head. So we went through this rather quickly. Does anybody have anything else to add about footwear that I missed, Dave missed, and we haven't talked about in the side chat yet? Because more information is better. No, we're not going down that rabbit hole over there. Stop. Quit. No, don't you dare type that in. Don't you dare. <laughs> And just, just to uh, confirm, no, that thing. Thank you. No, there's plenty of news coming out about that now. We don't need to talk about it that much. Yeah. I think everybody here should have gotten all the links that, you know, they want, they want to find, find out, you know, daily numbers and then good, honest news about it, so. And hey, just watch mainstream media now. They're back <laughs> for the last eight weeks. I'm sorry, Dave. I had to put that up there. Not live. No. <laughs> I'd have to go find a song. I'd have to go find me some platform shoes. I'd have yeah. to find a girdle because, you know, I got to cover some of this old belly up. You know, it just kind of in the way. All right. Lori's back. <laughs> Hey, Jake. Yeah. Yep. All righty. So, um, yeah. Come on, people. Who? Okay. Who didn't hit the like button? You are officially in timeout. Of course, I can't see who didn't do it, so I can't really actually do anything. Yeah. You're officially in timeout. So put yourself in timeout for five minutes or go over and hit the like button. You can come back and chat. Okay. I'm going to move this We're, around over here. It wasn't that bad, Lori. I mean, you're not that bad. You knighted us all earlier, so you're not that bad. You didn't condemn us to chains and shackles and gallows. Okay. Oh, all right. I did leave this up here. All right, ready for some more laughs, guys? Uh oh. Uh oh, hang on. Oop, oh, you forgot. Uh, hang on here. Thank you. There we go. And get this back up. All uh, right. Julie, I didn't do it. it was me. <sighs> oh, what? Some just chuckle stuff, stilt shoes. Some of the other ones they have out there. Hey, or, some of the ones that assist you in running are. Yeah insanely cool yeah Not that i could that, run in them but yeah yeah you saw where i got the two pictures from oh there's a pair one of those pairs i was talking about that should be worn. move your mouse to the left up up right there there's a pair of those things that should never be worn i think that isn't that supposed to be worn by uh, over in san francisco by the um gabby the um over in gabby no, um, hang on. I'm trying to get the more proper word here so I don't get a strike. I ain't begging for nothing. The, dom, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the doms. <laughs> so they can walk look, up and down your man. back. Look at the spike on the, the, for a heel. <laughs> yes, I know. That spiky right there. Yeah, you don't want, uh, yeah. 
Anyways. Okay. All right. I see the oh two different things to go to. Let's let's get some laughs here, guys. Do it yourself. Platform shoes. <laughs> and there he is putting the drill through into his platform shoes. I don't know why, uh, or stilt shoes. Okay. Someone's making Bigfoot shoes. <laughs> Where do you think all the sightings come from? Uh, but here is your, yeah, here is your actual uh, drywall stilt shoes. Adjustable. Mm -hmm. That's functional. The pair I wore. <clears throat> They weren't the ones I had weren't adjustable, but it was basically the same principle. Yeah. But yeah. Ooh, coffee can. Oh, oh the coffee can. Yeah. Who, who did, I did it. not I did it. do this? Who did not do this as a kid? Coffee can stilts. <laughs> <laughs> now if you want the big brother of the, of that one there's your uh five gallon can stilt with the with the uh duct tape to hold it hold the hold it to your ankle hey that's great when you're painting it's also great when you want to build up your leg muscles and have some thick thighs you're supposed to use empty cans not full ones what the heck's the fun in that <laughs> yeah. Lori, if you stood up and stood on an ant, you would get dizzy and fall down. You short. Oh, Lori, you gonna take that from him? Oh, she's not on the, she's not up here on the channel or the panel. I safe. Lori, you want me to put the link down in there? This would get interesting. <laughs> Stir the pot. Stir the pot. She's laughing too hard. <laughs> she can't. Yeah. Is it mod too? Yeah. Now let me go back up here. There was something else I saw here. Uh, it's not there. Let me go back one. And then I can bring the other one up here. But Lori, if you go there, I the administrator of that page. I have control. Come on, go back, get to the right one. <coughs> there we go. Cosplay. Who knows what cosplay is? If you don't, basically it's uh they dress up as characters from like Star Wars, comic books, and stuff like that. Living the dream. How's it going? Hey, Jeremy, how's it going? Yeah, Actually, so Lori, I gave you control of yeah. part of that page too. So, yeah, yeah. So now we're we've gone through everything pretty much. Now we're into the comical shoes and things people do, like to make stuff I for. I don't know for, of anybody personally that would want to wear goat shoes, but you know, hey, who, what do I know? Well, uh, this is, these are cosplays where they dress up, yeah, and you get the one the ones dressing up like from uh, uh, Percy Jackson that dress up as the stater or the satyr. Yeah, no, I I'm sorry, it's, something else comes to mind when I see something like that. So no. Yeah. How about talking more about prepping? How about Don't run to the store and buy all the dang TP. Yeah. Please, I still need some. <laughs> oh. I've seen you headed for your truck, Tibor. <laughs> uh, so anyways. Yeah, it, yeah it, nobody's going to go there if nobody actually goes there and does anything. Nobody's going to want to stick around the, the Discord. Yeah. So, wait, will a hair dryer? Say who what? Get a oh a bidet with a hair dryer. <laughs> Sorry, there's no hair dryer in this house. I do have a hot air gun. That's just a little uh, too warm. That's what uh Uncle Al says. His has has the uh 
the blower in it to dry you off. Living the dream. You go ahead and go deal with your goats. And if you can listen to, that's awesome. Yeah. Just be nice to them poor goats. They didn't. Do oh, I love. Oh, guys, go back and check out uh, Jeremy at Living the Dream Homestead. His last couple of live streams that were done. Uh, I think the one was done last night. The other one was going on earlier today. He has two sets of brand new um, baby goats. Two sets. Cool. They are cute and it's great. Yeah. So if you want to oh, moment, go over there, check out Jeremy's uh, uh, live stream from last night and uh, the one from today. Okay. Prepping question for chat. Prepping. Okay. Chat. Put your thinking caps on. Not to, no. Put the tin uh, hat away, dog. On it. Thinking caps. You have twenty dollars to spend. That's extra this month. Uh, what can, okay. I, I what can you do out. with that twenty dollars to increase your current preps? Okay, um, Bob, can you pull uh, pull that comment out of there? If you mention that word in here, uh, videos get demonetized. Well, you know, we're not talking about the red dragon here or in its real, real um, wording. Yeah, I can't do anything via the tablet because if it does, it puts him in timeout. So, yeah, uh, I tried to, I, I, I looked at it on my one here. And it, was, it was either timeout or a ban. I don't want to put him in timeout. Right. Can you just go back and retract it, please? Yeah. That would save a little bit of. Yeah, so now everybody, if you want to talk, if you want to say something, we're really not wanting wanting to talk about it. But please oh, don't use dragon. the uh, the c word. You know, oh, red dragon, red dragon, or the honey badger, as Chris Matheson says. Yeah. Awesome, hot uh, white ham. Yeah, twenty pound bag of rice and beans. Check something here. Is this one up? Caught up. The, the actual name of that current thing that's going around the country, we call it the, I coined it the Red Dragon back at the beginning of January due to its lo original location. So since then, we've been calling the Red Dragon. Kathy, about time you showed up. <laughs> yes, his name is a C word. Should we ban his name too? Thanks, uh, Bob. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah. 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 YouTube put out a video. Um, uh, it's, they put it out a couple months, about uh, a couple weeks back or whatever. And it was, it slipped under the radar for a lot of people. It was for uh, creators, one of those ones like that. And there was uh, like a, a 10 second blip in the middle of this video saying that they are demonetizing all videos and thinking about channels that are making videos specifically about that I, you know, what's going on over there and now here. Sensitive subject. Yes. Oh, Sen might get hurt. oh I'm so sorry. Yeah. No. So. But if you want to come back and talk about it, I'll be talking about it tomorrow night on my channel, just under my name, not its name. Yeah. So back okay. to my question. You have 20 bucks. What can you do to increase your current preps for this month that you don't have currently or that you think you need to increase of? And the first person that puts toilet paper in there, I'm timing them out for 120 seconds. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's, become, who's becoming a Canadian and becoming a racist? Probably me. <laughs> Heavens. Heavens. Julie, after all this nice stuff. All I'm right. Lori, Lori, Lori answered people you. To go, visit your, go visit you to get some soap. You're going to do that to me? It's just not nice. Julie. No, I'm sad. All right. Uh, Lori said... Um, <laughs> Buy canned goods, dry goods, medicine, Advil, Tylenol. That's one thing I noticed when I was at both Sam's Club and uh, Walmart. 
The pain relievers are solidly stacked. The cough drops are solidly stacked. The um, uh, allergy medicines, loaded. Nobody's buying any of that stuff. All right, we got uh, make my own hand sanitizer. Buy hand sanitizer. Good luck on that. Yeah, that's currently out of stock where I'm at. 20 bucks of canned goods. Uh, water. Good luck with that one, too. Uh, I got a hose out back. I'll use my hose. <laughs> uh, 20 pounds of propane. That's not bad. Uh, use vinegar, vinegar to clean your hands. Not bad. Someone said use it. You make mix, making a thing of vinegar, lemon juice, and I forget what else they said to make your own hand sanitizer. It was, aloe vera. It, aloe vera to give it the uh, base to hold everything together. Yeah. An extra pack of paper towels, which is funny. At the Costco in um, Pocatello, they were totally out of toilet paper but they had probably 50 pallets of brawny select the select the sheet paper towels so go bought five pallets that's why they're out no i didn't you know the worst comes to worst hey what's bounty's uh thing the quicker picker upper <laughs> you want to select the size you tear it you tear off the little, little sheet fold it in half and cut it three times and, and it, hey, it works. We've done Kathy it at scout just, camp. Kathy just put up a recipe for homemade hand sanitizer. One cup of aloe vera gel or clear bath gel and two thirds cup, 90% rubbing alcohol. Uh, wrong one. Dang it. It jumped so quick on me here. There we go. Yep. 90% rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Got to get the strong stuff. Or worst case scenario, dig into that liquor cabinet you got buried under your bed down there and break out a big old bottle of Jack. Do not fall for the trick that was played in Iran, which caused 43 people to lose their lives. Did you hear about that? Uh-uh. Yeah, apparently there was a <clears throat> some kind of video or something that went viral over there that says drinking alcohol will keep you from getting it. And 43 people died of the alcohol poisoning. That is that in itself is a tragedy. Whether they're yeah. whether they're anti-American, you know, whatever their belief is, nobody deserves to be right. done that to. Okay. No, I don't want to know what Iran is doing. I ran away from Iran. Wow. Because my Sam's Club up here in uh, uh, Idaho Falls has like a half a pallet on the, sh in, not out, out on a pallet, but on the shelves where amongst all the uh, other stuff of 70% um, alcohol. You're right, White family. They do not drink as a rule over there. It's against the religion, literally. They're not, they don't drink. That's why it affected the people the way it did. Yeah, unfortunately, Canada has some really strange regulations. And we'll leave it at that. Uh, some people. Okay, something just jumped right on by. I missed it here. So, yeah. The stilled spirits won't work. Everclear is borderline. Everclear, it's probably the closest thing you can get to something that will disaffect that is a manufactured bottled liquor. Yeah, Unless, okay. of course, you go to the hills of West Virginia or Southern oh. Kentucky and get a hold of some of them boys up there in them mountains. One of the mason jars. Stuff. Yeah. That, that'll that, kill anything. That, that'll kill it uh, from now until doomsday. Yeah, the stuff I'm talking about, Tibor, is 200 proof. Yeah. I had some when I was in basic training. I was laying down, sat up, took a drink, laid back down. Five minutes later, I decided I wanted to get up and use the restroom. I fell back down and stayed there for the next hour. Didn't move. 
I said, ouch, that hurts too much. <laughs> oh, cute. Yeah, I actually, why well, I actually considered doing that. Um, unfortunately, I have an eight-year-old boy who likes to. He wants to try different things, and most places that are safe enough in an apartment like mine to do something like that would be the tub. And he always wants to go play in the tub because he likes water. Mm -hmm. So I can't do that. Yeah. No, I would have, I would actually keep 200 proof moonshine for disinfecting purposes or fire starting. You will at that, at that uh, proof, you store it. And then even you go, go to sell some off, then you dilute it down to, you know, 90 proof, like, um, uh, blah, 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 vodka. You, just, uh, you dilute it down and stuff, and then you sell it, and you, that way you have, you get twice as much for it. Okay. Now you just mix it with some cocoa, Pepsi, or whatever your right. caffeinated flavor is. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're going to run it down here. We covered everything pretty good here. Yeah, but oh. Tibor, while it may kill off a person, which we might sell to one of those renegades over there trying to break into our compound, um, you can put it in a vehicle and it'll run. Yeah. Really good for a minute. Gil is having a brain? Fart. Brain it's fart. No. Breaking no, I got an upset stomach. Something might for lunch is uh, disagreeing with me. Uh -oh. He's trying his food stores in his bed. No, actually, it wasn't food stores. It was normal stuff, but I don't know, you know why. Speaking I don't of drink, but I got 11 bottles of home, homemade wine brewing. <laughs> Speaking of food, if you store food, make sure you eat that food. Because if you don't, your tummy is going to tell you later that you are a fool. Yeah. As you run fat, furiously to the restroom, hoping you make it just in time. It was either that, something, you know, let's see, I had, you no, know, I had hot dogs for a lunch, had shredded wheat for breakfast. Oh, there's a mix. Ooh. Huh. Hot dogs with milk. Yuck. No, uh, hot dogs was at lunch. Milk was yeah. in the morning no. at breakfast. Remember, it takes a few hours for your belly to digest what you done already ate. Yeah, well, the hot dogs at lunch was lunch wasn't until about two thirty, three o'clock. So, the heck, I used to eat hot dogs at dinner with a full glass of milk. Spam no. needs to be thin sliced and fried. <laughs> okay. Hey, Julie, no, he's not going to need TP. He's going to need baby wipes. He's going to need the soft, moist ones. Nah, dry just ain't going to cut it. And yes, spam sliced thin, fried hot dog water. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I fry my hot dogs. Very, uh. very little bit of butter. I split uh. them down the middle, lay them flat, put a lid on the top of them so they stay flat, and fry them up. Oh, that's right. I had peaches for dinner. That was it. That's what I didn't have. Yeah. That's right. I mentioned that another one. Yeah, I forgot about the can of peaches I had. Yuck. That was probably it. I had, I should have said I had having half the can I ate the whole thing. Julie, you I, have no not. self no self control. Oh man, that's what it was. Julie, you have not had a real dinner until you've actually had spam cooked by me. Now I had a friend, um, she was from um Guam. And oh, she she said, you know, she had like 300 recipes for cooking spam. 
it is big over there. See, Julie, the best way to serve spam, if you want to make it taste really awesome and make it feel like you've ate in flame mignon, <clears throat> you take four, four tablespoons of onions, two large portobello mushrooms, sliced thinly, put that in some butter, saute that up. When it's just about done, you put your spam in there and you mix all that together. You sprinkle some taco grated cheese on the top when it's all done. You serve it on a piece of toast. All right. Oh, we're getting into foods here now. Why not? Yeah. All right. Tell you what, Dave, I'm going to leave you in charge for a minute, and okay. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Now that he's gone, we can have fun. I just don't know what we're going to do. Yes. Spam cooked correctly, and the key word is correctly, is decent. But that's just like with any food. I mean, it, you can take the world's best food and a poor cook will make it taste like poop. Oh no, she sneezed. Everybody duck. Wait a minute. You're at home, Kathy. We ain't got to worry about it. Okay, what did I miss? What did I miss? No, actually, if done properly, the onions and tomato, uh, mushrooms and the meat will mingle, the flavors will mingle together, and it provides a really nice flavor. You still taste the meat, but it gives it a really nice flavor. Um, you had the right little spices, like some Cajun seasoning on top. Well, geez, Kathy, you're not supposed to cover the whole screen. <laughs> yeah, he's sheltering all right. Well, Julie, you haven't had me cook. When I cook in here just for me and Charles, People at the other end of the court, my court, come out. Well, what you cooking for dinner, Dave? What? Smells real good. I'm sorry, I'm not sharing. See ya. Bye. If I cook late for some reason, say Charles is playing next door with the neighbor kids, everybody gets hungry about the time I cook because I like using spices. I don't go above a medium heat on my stove ever. Most of the time, it's a medium-low heat, so when I slow cook. Uh, Lori, only if it's the one that you took pictures of. It's got to have the blueberries on top. Now, there is no way to make elbow taste good. None. Sorry. Nope. I don't care if it's the last can of food on the face of the earth. I'll tell good Lord, come get me. There's no food left. Come get me. <clears throat> no. My cooking videos went to the toilet every time I did one nobody watched. Yeah, it is. Chocolate cake with blueberry coolies. It doesn't smell good. These never did for me. That's why we went to, instead of buying canned dog food, we'd take, let's see, what was it? Two cups of cornmeal, put it into hot boiling water, then add bread from the ba uh, bakery. We used, to, when I was a kid, we used to go get those great big, huge 25 gallon paper brown barrels from the bakery. We get three of them a week because we could buy them pretty cheap. And we'd take the stuff that bags had slices in them because they were day old when we'd get them. If they had a slice in the bag, we'd mix that up in the dog food. We'd put some dry dog food in there, mix it all up and give it to the dogs warm in the wintertime. That way they had a nice warm meal too.
You know, see, I love rice personally. My son doesn't like it. And my mom hated it. My mom's term for rice was, why would you eat cooked maggots? So my mom tried to get me to quit eating rice all the time. It didn't work. I wish I had a can of spam right at the moment. I'd go up and take a picture of it and post it on Discord that nobody visits no more. Did someone put it with Alpo? Yeah, they said Alpo smells good. All right, here's a, here's a, little, a piece of trivia for you about Alpo. It was supposed to, it was built as a beef stew plant, except that one of the subcontractors got uh, the ball bearings for the conveyor belts and stuff that were packed with industrial grease, not food grade grease. So the whatever they produced in can no longer be consumed by people. So they turned it from a a, a, a beef stew factory into a dog food factory. Oh, I see how you guys are. Come visit my page and talk to each other. Don't even include little old me. I said no. Maybe. But I'll be happy with her. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So when people say that you know eating you know dog food is disgusting, just think of it. The only reason why it is dog food originally was because they used the wrong type of grease in the bearings. Yeah, your cooking oil used to be engine grease or engine lubricant, so. Yeah. Crisco. Who who does not have a thing of Crisco in their cupboard? Who has a thing? Who has a big can of Crisco with with a big wick <laughs> in the middle of it? Only you. <laughs> no, uh, several other people do too. I have the wick handy. It's just not in it. I will not. I will no longer eat Crisco after I found out exactly what it is and what it does to your body. I ate too much of it as a kid making oatmeal cookies. Hey, when mom baked back then, we didn't know what the heck was in Crisco. We didn't care. It just made dang good uh, homemade crispy crisps chicken. Yeah. My mom breaded her own chicken, and that was better than banquet. Yeah. Don't you dare, cat. She's trying to play with the laser. Oh, Lori put me in timeout. The Queen of the North has ruled. Yeah. I overrule her. <laughs> uh, I, I know it holds no weight, but, you know, I got to try. Oh, Lori, Lori, Lori. And you talk about me? Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Here's, here's, here's the best response for that one. <laughs> I have no fear. Trust me, when you are eight, no, no, I was, I was nine, you're looking down the barrel of a double barrel 12 gauge shotgun and you can see light at the other end because the shells aren't properly seated. And you look at the guy and say, go ahead, I'll come back and haunt you. <clears throat> you just wind up not giving a crap. You don't fear anything after that. Yes, my stepdad held a 357 toward me. He held a double barrel 12 gauge shotgun. After you face that, you kind of become immune to fear. I do fear some things, but most things I don't. Yeah. Unfortunately, the one thing you fear, Pelosi, is not from your state. Nah, I don't even fear her. You haven't looked closely at her then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know, Lori. I know. 
You're fine. But I, I didn't break out the jester suit for you, so that's why it was kind of hard to see it at first. We need to go find your court jester suit. I put mine away today. <clears throat> oh. I will be, should be, hopefully I'll get it all done tomorrow, putting out a video on getting your ham radio license, including wow. I finished downloading the entire pool of questions for the technician class license and have it set up. So I, I took all the wrong answers out. So you just read right answer, you know, question, right answer. An Olaf costume. <laughs> So I'll be trying to get that out here uh, uh, tomorrow or the next day. See, I, I have a problem when when I do tests that provide me with the right answer and I don't have to try and figure it out. That's why you have lots of Vicks Vapor Rub. You wipe it under your nose, you don't smell nothing but the vapors. You're good. Hey, Ontario. Three Halloweens. Age. And guy. That's what you have the costume for. Uh, I'm figuring three years ago. Oh, and Ontario has a Batman costume. Oh, so now we got Batman. We got Olaf. I feel weird then. I have a Grim Reaper outfit that I used to use in our haunted house, and I'd jump off the roof of the house, landing right next to the people in the walkway with this, including the uh, a real sigh. Of course, I was also in my twenties at the time, and yeah, doing I gymnastics. I just walk outside and say "boo," and it scares everybody half to death, and then I get in trouble for scaring the locals. Oh, Lori, that's not bad. When I was a kid, one of the neighbors. Um, they were a well-to-do family. They Every October 30th and 31st, they always put on some big shindig. One year, I think I was six, they put a coffin in the front yard. And the dad would lay in the coffin, and you had to walk by the coffin in order to get to the front door. And he would, you, they made sure, I don't know what they did to make sure it happened, but the hinges always creaked. And he'd open it so slowly. All right, Kathy, thanks for coming in and visitating. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to uh, post a video. Actually, it is in one of the videos, I think, out in the one cargo container. We have a magic Count Dracula coffin that's uh, up vertically. And so it's in our haunted house, what we do is we have it in, in, we had all these different rooms and the guide would tour them through the, through the uh, haunted house. And they get in that room and he'd enter the haunted and in, into that room walking backwards. So he's looking at them. So he doesn't see the, see the, uh, the coffin. Now he's talking to him and uh, explaining things. Our special guest is here as if the hot coffin's supposed to be closed inside. <laughs> and he gets, and he turns around looking and he goes, Oh man, Dracula stepped out and he left his coffin open again. And they can all see inside the coffin. It's got uh, the, the, the lining and everything else. As he closes it, he walks by in front of it, blocking their view a little bit. And as it closes, Dracula's coming, pulling out the back and coming through from the backside. So they see the coffin em empty. He no longer sooner it slams it shut and it co comes right back out, out of his hand and Dracula's coming out. The funnest part about that was, was one year, there was three guys off of the Diablo Valley College football team that came through with their girlfriends. They screamed louder and higher than the girls did. Oh, that's not bad. <laughs> and, and Lori, if you don't, if a scary thing to scare you, then you should never watch the movie Prince of Darkness. I, being young, dumb, and stupid, took my girlfriend and her friend to the movies. And I'm sitting between the two of them because they wanted to chat and I wanted to watch the movie. So I sat between them to shut them up. That was my first mistake. <clears throat> Second mistake was the scariest part of the movie. They both grabbed a hold of my legs and squeezed. I had five little spots of blood on both my legs for about three weeks. I had a black and blue mark where their hands hit. <laughs> Ow. 
Yes, I had a hard time walking. People thought I was doing something funny in the theater. I didn't do anything. I just sitting there. <laughs> I'm a victim. I'm a victim. Uh, the next best thing we did, we had a Frankenstein table on pneumatics. So it would pneumatically go and it would go fast enough that we had uh, some big guys that were six foot plus on the table. It would almost propel them off the, you know, throw them in the air off the table, dressed up as Dra as uh, Frankenstein. But right next to them, we had, um, where, uh, where the people couldn't see it, was some holes cut in the table and some uh, uh, those little serving um, stainless steel pots in there, round things, you know. And the guy would be pulling out, I don't need this. You know, pull out spaghetti and toss it out, pull out snails and stuff. And, ah, ah this stuff got in to put it off and to play it off to the side. And then he'd zap the monster. And everyone was thinking, okay, it's a fake monster because we also stuck newspaper around poking out of the, out of here on, on the sleeves and stuff and around the, around the gloves and stuff that were on there. So like, yeah, oh, it's fake. I can see the newspaper. It, it stand up and it starts walking towards them. Yeah. We d had more than once someone pee their pants from Frankenstein. Anybody want to adopt a cat? <clears throat> no. Lori's a cat person. Lori, come on down here and pick up a kitty. I'm about to strangle it. It's in there trying to mess with your project in the laser. Ooh. 16 watching now. Okay. <clears throat> okay. How fat is it? Let's, it's not even six. Uh, it's probably just over eight months old, so it's not that fat yet. It's still a kitten, basically, which is why it's getting into everything and trying to climb my green screen as a tree. It's green; it can climb it, so it thinks it needs to. That's why I have a water bottle. Oh, my cat would run circles around yours. It would make yours run faster and lose the, they'd lose their weight. Then you'd have three skinny kittens instead of two fat kittens. See, it works out to be about the same amount of size. How are you having an idiot puppy? <laughs> uh. Well, I've I seen an Alaskan Malamute the other day that I really, really want. It was a chocolate and white. Beautiful. And it was very, very friendly. But I decided just out of idle curiosity to use German words. I said, aus. And she sat. Not having been trained, she sat instantly. It's like, lady, you ever have to get rid of this dog? Here's my phone number. You call me. I don't care where I'm at. I'll come get it. She says, okay. She probably thought I was kidding. Um, I want the girls to live in their own places. You're cat free. <laughs> so Lori, are you, I take it then you're not really a cat person. Are you a dog person? <laughs> yeah malamutes are born for that kind of temperature that it doesn't bother them that's why they have thick coats lock and roll hey welcome hey oh Okay. Aw, oh, she likes dolphins. So cute. I'm a cat and dog and kids free. <laughs> well, it doesn't sound like you're kid free yet. They're still there. <laughs> yeah. That's a big lock. We don't care. Yeah. We enjoy everybody's company. 
yeah, we finished up on the shoes, uh, uh, shoes, boots, socks, um, inserts, and all the other stuff uh, a little while ago. How do I join my G? I have no idea. <laughs> sure. Take a look at something here Kill. real quick. Huh? Kill. Do you know that person? Uh, well, how do I get on the panel? No, I'm checking them out. Uh, Sorry, the panel, not to be rude or mean, but panel is for people who are here on a regular basis and have proved their merit in the discussions that we have, which are prepping related. Yeah. And now we're just kind of winding down here, relaxing. Okay, about. Oh, thank you, Ori. We appreciate it. We try to be comfortable and warm welcome. Okay. Well, uh, Master 15 joined in 2013. Joined, uh, and he has a few videos there. Well, if you stick around uh, for a couple more lives and stuff, we might have you up on here. And like I say, that's not to be rude. It's just, yeah. it's, is a specific topic and we discuss prepping related items. Yeah. So, I mean, if you can contribute in chat prepping related stuff and show us that you have understanding and knowledge of what we're discussing, you know, more than welcome after a week or two to either hit Gil or myself up on one of our lives. Yep. It'd be kind yeah. of foolish, no offense, to let just somebody that just showed up on the live stream and cause a ruckus. Yeah, it we, has happened to other live streams in the past. Yeah, That's why both Gil and I on my channel are a little more reserved as to who can join. Yeah. That's why I have a bunch of blue wrenches out there. Lay the old smack down. Yeah. I just want to move out of Ohio. Oh, I oh. Uh huh. Do you know why Michigan hasn't fallen into the Great Lakes? Why? Ohio sucks. <laughs> yes, Tibor, I said it. <laughs> oh. Hey, Michigan just 70 something to 30 something approved Michigan staying a Second Amendment sanctuary state. Cool. Michigan is a complete sanctuary state. T more agrees want, with you. Now you see why I want to move back to Michigan. But I'll okay. be nice. I'll keep my Southern Ohio prepping channel name. But hoping I was hoping to move move to a conservative state, maybe Texas. Hey, Idaho a uh, little over a year ago changed <laughs> state law so that you do not have to have a concealed weapons permit to carry concealed. Yeah, it's it's open it's open carry. Closed carry. Yep. Yeah, see, that's where I want to move to. I want to move to a state where it's not a government required license. God didn't give me a license. God didn't write in the Bible, you need a license to carry a weapon. He didn't write it, so I don't need it. Yeah. So I don't need the government to tell me I need it. So I just want to move someplace where I don't need it. That way I ain't got to argue with nobody. Uh, well, I, I can see that, Cecilia. What I miss, put it all right there. Yeah. Well, well, so you need to f surround yourself with a community of people that have no issues with stepping helping. off of their normal line of whatever they're doing to walk over and give you a hand. And that's not easy to find. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, like when I, to find my place where I did. Um, my, you know, I, I was looking for a year, you know, like at least four or five years before my wife got in on the looking and, um, it took us, you know, both, both of us really going at it full guns. We, you know, no pun intended. Uh, we, uh, found, uh, we found this property that we found here. I mean, we, we'd made like three or four trips each up here, uh, looking at properties and stuff. And this community we found here, you know, 
it's perfect. The city is only four has only four hundred residents, so and everybody knows everybody, and there's only four ways in, and it can be locked down like that. Hey, rock and roll. Uh, Heavens doesn't need content. She makes soap. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. He's gonna sniff the snow, the soap. Oh, dude. Can you see the name of that? Chocolate peppermint. Oh. Okay. It smells good enough to eat. I'm gonna put this one on a string and hang it in the center of the house, put a fan on it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, she makes soap. So get a hold of Heaven's Essentials. Mm-hmm. Because I want to keep it in the bag. I don't want it all the you know all the smell to run away. <laughs> I did find a neighbor though who's going to test one of the other bars for me and let me know what she thinks. Because she's having a baby and doesn't want all the chemicals and regular soaps. So I said, you know what? I got some awesome soap. I'll let you try it out. So when she gets hooked on it, I'll send her your way. <laughs> see? Yeah, um, see, uh so uh Dave's gonna be your uh your pusher out on the street. <laughs> Yep. I mean, uh, it smells so good. My cat is trying to lick the bag. Okay. <laughs> and no, she hasn't had any catnip. Uh, and she has all kinds of other stuff too. She took the one that was called granite. Yeah, yeah, I um, have those in my area too. Unfortunately, did I sit down here? Uh, where did I put it? I just got something today. This reminded me. I wanted to uh, shoot. I must have put it back over there. No. Yeah, I got a pack of the from my uh, video where I was making the um, putting the the T net in the lids of the mason jars. I was making the the mason oil thing. I just got my uh, a supply in of the um, those tea nuts, so I can start working on um, making some more of mine. I, know I'm, I promised to make uh, Cecilia a couple of those as well for her to use on her uh, mason jars. Heavens, you have people asking for a way to contact you. See, and Ryan, Thank put you. your Ryan, put your channel out there. See, soap do a body good. Yeah. So, heavens, we're going to have to get at least some kind of video out there. Um, even, it's, even if it's just you doing a voiceover of words, so people can find out how to get a hold of you and list the stuff you sell. Because mm-hmm. then I'll send more people your way. Lots more. Because, you know, if you want, I can try and hook you up with somebody that would make do kind of a store thing with you, maybe. Mm-hmm. And yes, I say, you got to do what you can. Some people don't have the option of bugging out no matter what happens. You know, it's... What it's happens if I don't use the, the touts? Trying to read Lori's question to me there. What happens if I don't use the touts? What? Now, uh, Lori's uh, question up there at uh, 8.55. Oh, the T-Nuts. T-Nuts. Okay, that's it. Nothing. Well, see, what, what I'm, uh, I'm going to do with my T-Nuts, um, I was going to do, I, I, I sincerely asked me for some. I was, if you saw my video on the um, mason jars where I put the drilled the hole in it, put the key in it, that got it all secured and put the wicket through it and everything. I'm going to make uh, a couple of those up for her. So it'll be all set and ready to go. Hoople's Cat EPL is the name of his channel. That's who he's referring to. Hoople's Cat EPL. He's an interesting bird. And then some. Uh, 
Uh oh, Julie. Well, you know what, folks? Here, I'll make it simple. If you would like to get a hold of Julie, get a hold of me via my email on my about page, and I will forward her your information. Okay, that'll make it simpler. Kind of use yeah. me as kind of a middleman. Kind of a filter. That way, she's not bombarded instantly. So, if you want to get a hold of her for soap, and she's got all kinds of essential oils and all kinds of other yeah. stuff. I mean, she even sent me tea with spoons, little teeny teaspoons. <laughs> so, I mean, she's got all kinds of stuff. Send me an email and I will forward it to her. After I forward it to her, I'll send you a list of what she's told me she carries and does. And then she can contact you afterwards. Oh, Laura, you want me to just send you a couple of, uh, of the T-nets? You already have the, I have the hole in your lid. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, Lori, um, email me your address and then I can send you a couple just, you know, the plain ones. And then you just, you know, use your little hammer thing and, you know, do like I did in the video. Did you see what Heaven's put up there a little earlier? Heaven's put up there a little earlier. Yes, hold on. Let me. Um, I'm going backwards. 57. Uh, jailbird? Yeah. I can make soap on a rope for the jailbird in you. <laughs> Woo! Lye yeah. does break down the oils and poison ivy. Yes, that's what I've yeah. heard. Yeah. Now everyone's going to get on me for this, but since poison ivy, poison oak stuff was brought up, when right. I was working construction, we had another, and it worked. It was a surefire uh, way that an old timer, um, I mean, he was an old timer, told me about it. Uh, basically, you take a, you get like a, um, a quart jar, a quart, you know, a plastic bottle. You put, um, one part bleach, four parts water in it, and you just kind of shake it up. And you have you don't put how to say pour a lot, of, you have a lid that just has a small hole in it, and you just kind of on your arms and stuff and rub it around. And everywhere you got poison oak, you rub it around, and you you do it while you're in the shower, and then you step into the stream of water after after 10 seconds to rinse it off because it diluted like that, it's not going to make your everything all funky and feeling weird but it is going to dry out and and cause the oils to break down totally and it worked we were working in poison oak and not just poison oak but we were digging the di ditches and we had the, the roots coming up with a black poison oak sap dripping off of it and that's the only thing that kept the crew uh working oh. okay well Lori, tmi tmi Lori. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Robert and Cindy. Good to see you sneak through the side door. Hey, uh, Robert and Cindy, you know, my brother and I, we used to wrestle in Poison Oak when we were kids. It did not bother us at all until we were working in the ditch and we got poked by the roots coming out. There. And that black sap, once it got into us, we lost, we lost our immunity to Poison Oak. I mean, it, you know, we used to just like, it was gone. Okay, jewel weed dissolves the oil, and it's pretty. Okay, I have to write that down here. Jewel weed. Look that up. Weed. Information like this is good to know, guy. All right, there we go. Hey, Mo, homesteading. Yeah, thanks, Tibor. You know, you know, trying to keep all sorts of stuff like that around. I had poison ivy go systemic brutal spread all over. Yeah, we had a, the one owner of the on the construction company were. 
Oh, also touch me nots. Yeah. Okay. A K A T O U S. Touch me nots. All right. Thanks. <coughs> My uh, our our boss, our one boss at the time, he was hardly ever on the job. And we're wondering why isn't uh, Woody around? I mean, Woody's usually always on the job. And this particular job, we found out from the, his partner. He goes, "Oh, you won't see him around here very, very, very rarely. He is so allergic to uh, uh, poison oak, and you know, he says, yeah, he gets it anywhere. One place. The second place he gets it was Mister Happy, and he ain't happy no more. And he." pissed my brother off one time and when he was out there and stuff and my brother went over when he wasn't looking rubbed the poison oak on his hands went over and he goes well see you later Woody and shook his hand next day he came out there and he was mad he goes you did that on purpose you did that on purpose hey three for the road uh, RV hey good to see you Okay, so let's okay, pick, simmer it in water, then store. Pour the rinse over. Ah, so the water, you, the, the water uh, mixture you get from the, uh, from it is what you, you know, store, basically store in the bottles and you, you poison ivy or you pour it over it. Cool. Okay, Heaven's Essentials just put up her direct email out there. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. So, see, guys. Little T. Another little T. And she even got this cute little rack for your soap to sit on. I don't want to take it out of package. It's so cute. And I make okay. stuff, too. It's just not as nice as hers. I just make coasters right. and things. Yeah. Um, Julie, when the uh, when the broadcast is all over uh, tomorrow and and tomorrow morning, do you want me to go back in and um, I don't know, but can I go back in afterwards and block a comment or remove a comment? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you wanted to leave that in there for everyone to see, or just you know, of course, if they're if they watch the watch it this far through, they're they're dedicated followers, so I guess it's okay. <laughs> yeah, because we're talking what an hour and oh, two two, two hours hour and now, half in, or hour and forty five, hour and fifty in. Yeah, it's been two hours now, two hours now, so. Well, honestly, Lori, it's all natural. There's no chemicals in it. Not really. Oh. So, Shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Yeah, we have a chance of snow coming up this weekend uh, here in Idaho as well, so, southern mm -hmm. Idaho as well. But the temperature is supposed to be you know, in the 40s, so I don't think the snow is going to actually hit the ground. I think it's going to turn to rain. And like I say, if you, yeah. if you didn't catch her email, go ahead and email me and I'll forward it to her. Yeah. I got her on speed dial. I just type in the first letter of her name and there it pops up. Yep. Actually. And with Gil. I got Gil on speed dial. Just type a G and boom, there's his name. I got you. I just type an S and Southern Ohio prepping pops up. Yeah. The problem is he doesn't tell everybody how he's got it put. He's got an SOB, not SOP. No, I got SOU. Shit out of luck. No. So part of southern ohio southern okay yeah all right well that's, and, that's why you make sure it's insured julie i mean Lori. duh sorry that's why you make sure you get it insured just like i you know the stuff you want to get for me i'll make sure it's insured one Check that out. That's why sure. we're all three here in Ohio. Okay. And which guy are we referring to? Refresh my old memory. Uh, 
Hey, Heavenbound Farm, how's it going? Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah, so let me check Brett to get my other list up here so I don't forget it here, real quick here. So, tomorrow, Dave, have you picked the topic? Open chat, just like Open last week. I already know where we're going to wind up going is to the dragon, and that's fine. All right. Because, like I said earlier, lamestream media has backtracked everything they've been saying for the last eight weeks, and now they're going back to everything I've been saying since the first of January. Yeah. And the problem yeah. is, there's still people saying I have no clue what the I'm talking about. That's okay. I'll tell them to go watch CBSN. Yeah. Yeah. Someone else on uh, on. Um... Facebook was saying, oh, no, it's not. It's not like that at all. And it's like, uh, eh. yeah, here. And I gave him the, the websites for um, the John I'm Hopkins and stuff. They came back and said, huh? So were you talking about Hoople's cat? Hoople's cat preparedness? Hoople's cat EPL. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I had, had, had them come back to me afterwards and go, oh, wow, you're right. I go, uh-huh. I, 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 I had to ask the next question to him. Do you remember what I used to do for work? Oh, I forgot about that. Hey, Lori, don't get me started on people who don't know what they have no clue about. You, young lady, mistakenly made a comment on a picture I posted of a link I posted, and you mistakenly said the wrong words. Because oh, you, young lady, said contrails. Those are not contrails. Those are chemtrails. Up in Canada, y'all don't know about it as much as us down here in the States do. But they've been doing it since the early 60s. They've yeah. actually finally admitted to it. And now yeah. they say, we're going to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why I didn't give you no grief about it on the Facebook page, Lori. I figured you knew. Yeah. Okay. Really All right. So, since we're over two hours here. No, we got, oh, we went up in numbers. Oh, we got more in here. All right. Lori. Cool. Be nice. They're not trying to take some trail. <laughs> I haven't heard it referred to that before. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I have some relatives that could do that from the ground. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so tomorrow night. Not, tomorrow night is Dave at nine o'clock mm. Eastern, eight Central, seven Mountain, six Pacific. Then Friday night, yes. I'm in here for the Friday night special. And the topic is, is going to be, what is the state of your evolution? Are you evolving or, or de-evolving as a prepper? And that is at um, 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 Central, 8 Mountains, 7 Pacific. Oh, Kathy had to come by the Discord channel and visitate. So special. And yeah. folks... If you're looking for a way to communicate with each other outside of Facebook's governmental rule or wanting to chit chat other than on a YouTube live stream, I have a discord channel open. There is a link in most of my videos, a standard videos. Um, click that link and it'll give you entrance into my discord channel. We have 40 plus people in there right now and it is a place to come and talk. You can chat. You can voice chat. You can video conference. Um, there's a state area. Um, there is a hobby area. There's Bible area. There's video links, as well as various other places. <laughs> Our species is flawed. Lori. Yes, Lori, and... Uh Part of that, if, if what I, what it affects both ways, because as Dave and some others have mentioned, there are those Neanderthal, Neanderthal knuckle dragging. Want me to do uh, it? Yeah. 
to tos- testosterone-filled, knuckle-dragging, Neanderthal-thinking buffoons. Yeah. Who go, oh, I can't wait for uh, an SHTF event, or I can't wait for the end of the world as we know it. And they're 200 pounds overweight and uh, have all the wrong stuff stored and don't have enough of anything. Lori, you're not going to sound stupid on Discord. You're not. Okay. Um, the, what it, was, it wasn't explosive wipes. It was actually um, what they use is a totally sterile piece of cloth to see if it picks up anything that might be um, have the, any of the tra- uh, chemical traces on it, and they put it in the analyzer. But uh, because it probably went through the x-ray and they saw all the, um, I'm like, I can't, I can't say what colors, but it came out look, looking like organics, which is what explosive compounds are. And they were going, oh, geez. And the operator, the x-ray operator went, buck up. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. I used to do that, you pack stuff in stuff in there like that just to, when I was testing them. Yeah, just to watch them, watch the look on their face go, Especially when I laid a bunch of wires in there too and everything else and some batteries. That's awesome through for the road. Glad to hear it. <laughs> yeah, Lori, that's what we we're talking about. The ones oh, 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 oh. me <laughs> alpha male Neanderthal. Very independent. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not afraid to call them out. They've already tried doing yeah. their damage to my channel on network for a moment, but I, yeah. I, I, I took some steps. Yeah. But yeah, some of them were, were smart, but they were dumb in other things. Yeah. Compared, compared to us today, they may have been smart back then, but compared to us today, uh, No, I will be doing that tonight. <laughs> yes, I love the original Planet of the Apes and s- series. Damn them apes! Uh. <laughs> I just have I, I've been trying to figure out which one to use first. There, heavens, I'm not sure. Uh, well, um. Because I don't want to do the chocolate and mint one because I'm afraid my cat will come in and try and nibble my nose off. So I'll have to shut the door. All right. Um, looking at certain members of our species, I could be 100% wrong on that, Tibor. You're right. Especially when I, when I look at Schumer, Pelosi, Clinton. And, of course, the b- biggest one of them all, Greta. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to go there. No, please do not get me started. But if you want, if you guys want to go there, go over to Suspicious Observers. He had a great uh, video came out um, this afternoon. Um, I loved it. It was really good. It was absolutely Short fabulous. Yes, it was good. And it had the links to all the other good ones. That, you know, it's, I've been going back and I watched the full movie when they did which was like an hour and a half. And then I watched all the other uh, short ones on it to get uh, other details. There's 43 separate little videos in the making of the catastrophe series. And it don't take the name as what it sounds like. He actually does an excellent job of explaining the earth's history. Scientifically. And of course, what will happen in the future. Not because it's, it's happening happen now or tomorrow, but it's going yeah. to happen again. It's happened numerous times in the past. It's a cyclical event, just like the poles yeah. on the sun flip every 11 years, like clockwork. It hasn't changed since we started recover- recording it. Every 11 years, it changes. Yeah. They flip north and south, north, south and north. Ever been over a barrel? <sighs> Uh, are you talking figuratively, or are you talking about it's a, a movie. Uh, It's a movie. Oh, uh, ever seen Over the Barrel? No. I've seen Over the Hedge. Yes, folks, hydrate. 
Make sure you get your liquid. Liquid. I need my caffeine or I stop working. Yes, um, I like to uh, refer to those people as candidates for the Darwin Award. Those who would not make a natural selection. I mean, um, pass. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does whiskey count? Depends. What's the reference on that? I missed it. I was laughing my butt <laughs> off at some of the comments in here. Liquid. Liquid. Oh, oh, free hydrating. Uh, well, eh, depends what you have with it because with alcohol actually dehydrates you. So you got to have enough other liquids in there like orange juice and uh, cranberry juice. Oh, it's more headed to 1984 by George Orwell. You followed closely behind. Actually, before George Orwell, we're heading towards uh, uh, what Fahrenheit. Um, Oh, 451 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, there was a book when I was a kid and for the life of me, I can't find it nowhere. I can't find it under the USBN, which is the book database. It was called Utopia and I can't remember. I can visualize the cover, but that book and I was uh, nine, maybe 10 when I read it. So that was 40 plus years ago. And it was strangely, eerie, eerily close to what we're living right now, just before it went to full born. Yeah. Yeah. She's coming up here trying to pat my legs, trying to play, play. Oh. Yes. Fahrenheit 452, Ray Bradbury. Yes. Another another scientific uh, fiction one, which I I like the twist in it, which most people missed, was uh, that one uh, with um, is that a young young Richard Chamberlain or who was I can't remember who it was. It was called Logan's Run. Mm -hmm. Had uh, what's his name Brown as as Box in it. Yeah, I mean that was just so. I mean there was so much in it that was just so. Underlying stuff that most people missed. Lori, you want chips up in your lap? Why do you want chips in your lap? Oh, wait, you're talking to your crazy cat. I'm sorry. <laughs> Atlas shrugged. Never uh, seen that one. There's a, there's a Atlas shrugged as, as part of a book series, I believe. Um, let me check it out here for you guys. Oh. Before I forget, um, Saturday is going to be a really hot topic for everybody. Saturday, Survival Saturday. The topic is Fire? which state is best for a bug out location and why? Like button, please, folks. See yeah. that little thing that looks like this? Please go over and touch it gently. Yeah. Don't break your computer. Just gently like it. touch it. Let me put this up real quick. Soylent Green. Yeah, that was Maybe another one. Where... Actually, people trying to make that and sell it right now. Yeah. Not out of people, I hope. Well, I have no idea. Yeah. The recipe is called a trade secret. Never heard of that one either, Tibor. Atlas Shrug. Probably because Boom. of the name. Let's see. All right. Atlas Shrug by, I, I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. A Y N, Ann, Rand. Atlas, Atlas Shrug Part Three, Part oh, One. Man. Yeah. There's a, a bunch, bunch of books on that. What? Your hair keeps going that color, Lori? Well, if you quit drinking that funny stuff, you wouldn't have that problem. Yeah. 
Boo. The 50th anniversary edition of Atlas Shrug is on sale on for on Kindle for 450. Cool. But I have a topic for Ooh. everybody. Go ahead. There's a video out there. It's on Prime, but you have, you have to buy it or rent it, you know. But by you know, uh, uh, how do you pronounce his, na his name? I uh, Ian mm -hmm. Rand. The Prophecy of Atlas Shrug, and he's explaining it. Hmm. May have to check that one out. Yeah. It's probably more like the Reader's Digest condensed version. Yeah. Here's but it's a video, put, not the book. Here's something to put in y'all's sinking caps. You ready? Oh, oh thinking cap. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me get, let me get my thinking cap on here. Set my other hat. You're going to need your DHS hat. There it is. Okay. Look up Apophis 20. 29. Oh, yeah. It is real. It's fact. Spell it again. Apophis. Don't ask me to spell it. English was my worst subject in school. Math was my best. And the other day I kind of failed at math. So now I'm not sure. I do believe Office. it's ACP. Office Asteroid. Yes. 20. 29. Okay. Okay, uh, get ready, guys. Here we go. Happy birthday to Larry. Happy okay. birthday to Larry. Happy Huge birthday astro asteroid Apophis fly by Earth on Friday the 13th in 2029. 20, Ooh, yeah. And they got all sorts of images of the la of uh, stuff going on. The la it's a it is 370 meters diameter. It caused brief concern in 2004 in December. It will, um, there is a 2.7 possibility, uh, percent possibility that it would hit Earth on April 13th, 2029. And that's on Wikipedia. And so you look up uh, three nines, 1242 Apophis, or you just Google. Um. Apophis asteroid, and and Apophis isn't the only big one out there floating around, you know, as a near, near Earth uh, passing asteroid. Nope, there's some that we don't see until oh crap, it already hit, and almost missed us. It's like what was that? <clears throat> Three weeks ago, we had one pass between the Earth and the Moon that they didn't see coming until it had already passed us. Yeah. All right, and here's some other of, of, of the other ones. You know, there's the uh, Last year in 2019, there was one as then it talks about some of the other ones and stuff. So did it. Yeah, there is um yes, it's it's colors changed. I've been there several times. Lori, how dare you abandon me for a hockey game? Actually, what I need to do bookmark this one. I need to put it under Book info. Yes, and um, this isn't exactly what I based my book on. I'd already started writing my book when I found this information. I was like, "Oh shit!" Pardon my French, ladies and gentlemen. It's okay. But yeah, my books is basically on something similar. Where it's, yeah, well, and it's a little bit bigger than this one. And it, miss, it passes between the uh, Earth and the uh, Moon. Yes, our journey back to basics. Please remove the C word. Uh, YouTube is cracking down on channels that are using that word. We call it the Red Dragon. And that will be discussed, I'm sure, tomorrow night on my channel. Yeah. Under that name and that name only. Yeah. Hey, just go back. Just retract the... Uh, the comment, please. Yeah, just that's just to save Gil's channel from getting hit. Yeah, they will. They, uh, basically, uh, a couple of weeks ago, YouTube put out a, a creator's video like they do all the time, and it mm -hmm. was a, like a little in, near the end of it, you know, about uh, four fifths of the way through it. It had this little blip. Oh, by the way, we've declared about that word, the other word, the let with the number in it and everything else as a sensitive topic and we are demonetizing all videos within it yeah so uh 
yeah, re just refer to it as the Red Dragon. I might do a hand commercial, but I ain't doing nothing else, Evans. No, uh uh, not happening. <laughs> yeah, you, if you want to call it Puff the Magic Dragon, but there's some people out there that, I mean, I, I, you know, that's gotten a little bit of uh, criticism too on, 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 on the Magic Dragon one. Okay. Lori, you're still no, you disease. are you are you're officially grounded, Lori. You cannot go to the game. You are <laughs> grounded. All right, Budweiser you sickness your is probably a good one to too. Your keys away. I'm gonna tell your yeah. daughter to take your keys away. She's gotta find her address first. But uh yeah, that's all on um my channel, Dave's channel, Will's channel um several of the other channels you know everyone's referring to it as you know the red dragon and then somebody else refers to it as what was it um i can't remember what they he, he referred to it as well chris calls it the honey badger yeah because you don't mess with the honey badger no no no, no. they have a nasty reputation yeah, it's one of the pound for pound. It is the most ferocious beast there is. Yeah, it'll bat a lion will back down from a honey badger. Yeah, and the badger family also includes the wolverine, and you know the regular badger, and yeah. Lori, I actually plan on doing, or not, Lori, Julie, I plan on doing that because I have a fan running in my room at night. So yeah, wonton well, flu. No on Tan Fu. Yeah, um, Ontario. Um, Corsair Trainer just calls it the Kung Flu. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Oh, and if anybody in the chat tonight is in southern Idaho or northern Idaho, eastern Washington, western Montana, western Wyoming, Northern Utah or Northern Nevada. Um, I got uh, two videos up already um, on the uh, Southern Idaho and neighbors get together coming up. And look, uh, we're looking at June 20th right now. Um, Butch of Sand Hollow Homestead was down in Homestead checking out the parks and checking with the city. And he checked with the restaurant. And so. Um, we're getting things going along. If you're in any of those areas and you want to come, go over to my channel, look at, look at the, um, Southern, uh, Southern Ohio special, excuse me, Southern Idaho <laughs> special announcement. I've been on Southern I Ohio with Dave for so long as, you know, but Southern Idaho special announcement. Julie, you're more. And just make a comment on that if you want to come or you want to volunteer. Watch the watch it. <laughs> Julie, you can come to Ohio if Gil doesn't want you up there. All right. Um, Julie, if you're if you're coming from uh, California and you want to come up by Boise, make the trip. You're more than welcome. Hey, Gil, I'll put something together for what you and I discussed before stream so you can show it to everybody. Okay. But uh, yeah, no, don't. Even but, know. I see it. Healthy lives matter. <laughs> well, in that case, um, <laughs> do not eat, drink processed foods. Eat organic, if at all possible. Which comment is that? I haven't seen anything you put up there, Lori, that I'm offended by. The one just above, or uh, one, two, three, four, fourth one up. Fourth one up from that one, two. Yes, they one, do, Wade. Two. I do too. Okay, I, got, I miss it. It's going so fast now, I can't. I also like sour cream. 
baked potatoes. Oh, 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 no, Lori, you leave that there. You leave that there. Well, I, I, I like everything that's bad for you and some of the stuff that's actually good for you. Yeah. But see, when I have my salad, when I feel like being a rabbit, it's got to be drowning. And I mean drowning. That lettuce has to be crying for a life preserver in blue cheese dressing. And for those who have never done it, get some regular blue cheese. Get a really good uh, microscope and look at the blue cheese under a microscope. Yes, it creepy crawly around. It's blue alive. cheese is a living organism. Think about that the next time you have a salad. Yes, uh, uh, our journey back to basics. I give him a bad time about it too, occasionally. And he's trying to quit. I am. It's just not easy. No. Because right now, without taking any kind of pain medication, it's the only thing that actually keeps me able to sit here this long. All right. Uh, Lori, think of it this way. Um, blue cheese is alive. So are your yogurts. Yep. And your other stuff was supposed to be good for your, um, what's it called? Um, they say to eat. This um for your stomach and stuff. Um active cultures. Yeah, but they use another term as well, but yeah. That's that's what it said. It's good. <laughs> Blue cheese spits. <laughs> Probiotics, yes, that's the term I was looking for. Yes, there you go. Yeah. No, don't get me wrong. I like a homemade I like good homemade Italian dressing, but I love my blue cheese. Yeah. <laughs> that the, was a Freudian uh, slip. All right. The chi chain. <laughs> when I was young, there was a place called Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor. They made their own blue cheese dressing. That is the only blue cheese dressing I ever liked. Of course, they also had the great awful, awful milkshake, which was awful good, awful big. If you drink three of them at a sitting, you got a fourth one free with a card you can redeem at any time. Yeah, I think after the second one, I'd be done. See, blue yeah. cheese is not for the faint of heart. And my mom loved blue cheese. Oh, my mom, my mom hated it. My mom couldn't stand it. That's the only no, reason why I tried it at that one place because she said this tastes different than the other. So I tried it and it was it was actually pretty good. I grew up being a uh, Thousand Island man, and then later I on, I, hamburgers. I got. Then later on, I went at a restaurant. Which one was it? Um, Chili's had the um, Caesar salad, the chicken Caesar salad, which I my wife got me to try, and it it was pretty good. And then she got me. She got the, all these different uh, oil and vinegar dressings, and got me hooked on some of those. Cheese Fantastico was a great uh, oil and vinegar dressing with a little cheese in it and stuff. See, I, I was fortunate. My mom hated several foods that I loved, and she would endure cooking them for me, like split pea and ham soup. She couldn't stand the smell of it. She didn't like the looks of it. She said it looked like a baby's diaper. It exploded in her pot. I love it. She probably but, she probably saw the movie The Exorcist. She did. Where, oh, die. And she, and she and what's her name she's just spewing the and that was split pea soup they were spewing mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but i love split pea soup mm -hmm. mouse toes has a hell of a recipe for it and i keep trying to go back and find it and i keep not finding it so i gotta get her to get it to me well she probably went and turned it uh marked uh unlisted so you couldn't find it yeah probably yeah french pea soup has it got little Frenchies in it? French onions, that is. Had me going there for a second. Yeah, I'm keeping it PG-13. Uh, yeah, the uh, the Farrell's ice cream parlor uh, in, uh, mm -hmm. after they got bought out from the other place when I was a little kid, um, 
and San Jose had the uh, the one sandwich. Oh, it was a oh, it was a delicious sandwich. It was called the Gastronomical Delicatessenal Epicurean's Delight. It was a submarine sandwich. <laughs> Get back in far enough so you can see it. Yeah, wide, long. There we go. About that wide. Huge. Oh Usually, about four or five of us would gang up on it. Sounds like a trip to the ER with a stomach pump. The sound. Oh no, my my cousin who was two years older than me, Roland. He ate a lot, and he wasn't fat. He was, you know, yeah. You know, but he went on a bet with uh, my older brother and one of his older brothers. Went in there and ate a whole one of those sandwiches by himself. He looked pregnant when he came out of there. His stomach stretched. And we said, oh, well, are you going to go to the bathroom and barf? He goes, heck no, that was too good. I'm just going to keep it. Let's just let it di- go home, sleep, and just let it digest. Lori's trying to go run off. She's she's laughing too hard. Hello, <laughs> fellow Earthlings. Thank you, Howie. Hello. Hey, Allie. One of my favorite soups, though, that comes that I get from the store come is, oh, is, sorry, a, is a wow. Campbell soup. It's a um, Campbell's bean and bacon soup. Oh, I just love that. Lord, yeah, it was in, in the eighties. The company went up, went under uh, in the eighties. I think it went under. At least they pulled I, the three stores. I the three ferals that I knew about are gone. <laughs> hey, Gil. We may yeah. have to tone on our comedy. We're having several people that are having gastrointestinal issues at the moment, ranging in various degrees. Uh, does that include a, side stitches? I don't know about that, but we've had a poof out there. We've had a a trickle out there. <laughs> No, I'm not sheltered in place. I'm fine right now. It's 11.40 here, so it's late here in Ontario. I'm so happy. Hello. Yeah. Hey, one little lady. There's one little old lady used to do it. Hello. Anybody remember that sound bite? Uh, that wasn't a lady. That was uh, Robin Williams. You blew it. <laughs> everybody knows it, what it was. And that movie was made after the other one with Dustin Hoffman. What was that movie called? <laughs> Nobody's even going to guess. Nobody Come even. On, children. <laughs> yeah, sovereign citizens enough to make anybody laugh. <laughs> when, I, when I need to, something relaxing, I watch Sovereign Citizens getting their windshields busted. All right. Have, uh, Julie has uh, Mrs. Doubtfire for the first one. Tootsie. Yeah, All right. Three for the road. Got Tootsie. Yes. Well, oh, uh, speaking of Tootsie. No, she put Tussie. She's talking about a butt again. She's got, I mean, Lori's got something to do with that. I mean, tonight it's always been a Freudian slip about a butt somewhere. I I was on uh, on my uh, Amazon Prime movie ch- uh, yes, thing. How he has question. All right, what's your question? Ask away. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to have to do a talk with you, Lori. Uh, all right, Howie, what's the question? Give him a second. He's got to type it out. He's probably been digging in <laughs> yeah, the dirt. And, and, and the, the, the lag between us and them. Because mm-hmm. we see stuff, and then by the time we say it, by the time you hear us say it, it's, it, it can be like 10 About seconds. Eight seconds. Eight, yeah. Unlike when uh, Scott does it, Scott has a 22-second delay on Hidden Valley Homestead. Mm-hmm. Of course, he's down in L.A., so that explains yeah. that. Yeah, that's he's got to go through the government channels first, kind of like they do over in Dragonland. Yeah. Why well, he's bringing up that? I didn't bring it up, Lori. You brought it up. I keep bringing up those words. 
<laughs> Anyways, waiting for Howard's question. I guess um, I was talking about Tootsie there. Made me think of on um, my Amazon Prime channel on the uh, for the movies. They have Little Big Man, and I started watching it again. If you watch Little Big Man, the beginning to the end, I made two times. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Scott isn't missing. More, more time in the videos, the better. Get more people out there realizing, you know, you know, you know, ways to com combat it and get our health back. That's why I started getting beats, thanks to you. I always hated beats as a kid, but thanks to Howie, I got beats I'm eating. Beats, not butts. <laughs> Anyways, on Little Big Man, you know, Dustin Hoffman was a young guy when he did it. But the old man at the beginning and the end is Dustin Hoffman with all that latex makeup on doing the whole thing. Yes. I think Scott's just been working an awful lot there, Julie. Because the last thing I seen from him was his live stream. But he also yeah. said he was going to be working a lot. Yeah. That's this one. Okay, I can take out foot fungus, foot powders, sorbine junior, stilt shoes. That was funny. Uh, I'll send up the second one, and it's also the second. Oh, it's almost the same as the first. I actually used to see you'd want somebody down on the Carolinas to get it from. What you looking to get? Tobacco seed. Um, yeah. Um, Anthony. I'm not sure if Anthony was talking about doing some of that. Yeah. Um, Palmetto prepared. Anthony Palmetto prepared is down there. Oh, um, Ryan, the gamer in the chat here. He's down uh, North Carolina, I believe. Cool, how we were watching for it. Yeah. Cool, Hallie. If you want beets, get some beets from Michigan. Yeah, they grow a lot of beets around here. Okay, hang on. So, uh, uh, Laura, you talk about the beets helping the production of kidney stones? Reduction. Oh, re reduction? I do. Oh, she says production. I don't know. I don't eat beets. Uh, beets bring back a very, very bad traumatic. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Okay. Yes. She says, yes, it does. Well, that's why Howie says just one beet a day. There's my beet. Okay, Michael. Beat it. Beat it. Oh. No, I don't have the keyboard plugged in right now. Okay. Uh, she just needs the seeds. Mm -hmm. Okay. You might be able to ship seeds across the border since they're not actually. So. Yeah. Just put them in a... Sealed baggy, clear baggy, and put on their cucumber seeds. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that out loud. That wasn't me. Uh, I bet you it grow at Howie's place. Oh yeah, I bet it would grow at Howie's place. Or one if you got beat, room, put a little one beat in a day. Yeah, I saw that video on on, on the fish. Mm -hmm. That was a cool one. Wow. Jeez, we're coming up on three hours. I think we've uh, run this one long enough here, folks. 
Oh man, the comedy was just getting rolling. Yeah, I know. That's about the only place it will grow. <laughs> on at had uh, <laughs> at Howley's. Well, if you have a greenhouse, you could um, probably be. probably do it. Not a lot of uh, tobacco up there, but you could grow a little bit in a greenhouse or maybe one or two plants indoors. Yes, even dirt grows at Howie's place. Okay, Lori. And she's going to abandon me tomorrow night for a dang hockey game. Uh. But you have to have a license to grow tobacco in Canada. Oh, you do here in the States, too. Oh, okay. It only, but only if you're going to sell it in the States, isn't it? No. To grow your own, you have to have a license for it. Wow. Well, some states call it a medical marijuana card. No, for that, yeah. Go up to personal use only. Yeah. And I'm not sure some states have different limits on the number of plants and the size of the plant. Every state's different, so it's hard to give a generalized number. Do they make you have to have a permit to grow coffee beans in America? Uh, probably not a permit, but probably tax you so hard that you'll regret doing it. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually allergic to marijuana, so. Yeah. If you were, you know, if, if anybody's seen uh, Stony Ridge Farmer, uh, Josh over there, he bought an old piece of land that had been had been a tobacco farm, but it had totally, abused, the tobacco had sucked everything out of the land. The only thing that could grow on the land good were trees because their roots went down deep enough to get back down where some good soil was at. And so that's why uh, uh, tobacco gets so hard. It just sucks everything out of the ground unless you uh, rotate crops on it. Coffee grounds will help put nitrogen back in the ground. Yeah. And if you have, oh I forgot the name. There's a, there's a flower. I can't remember it. Um, shoot. My wife has, has, has a plan of it at home in uh, California, but if you put coffee grounds on it. It'll turn bright blue. Yeah. Howie, I can't comment on your cooking videos cause I get so hungry. I wind up eating my keyboard. Didn't have to go out and buy a new one. And that's why the Native Americans only planted a little of it and just moved it around. I need to end it so I can get water. <laughs> Lori, uh, over there in the kitchen, right over that that way, is a faucet. Just go, and it works. For now. <laughs> for now, it works. Just go, and there you go. There's some water. All righty, guys. So uh, tomorrow night, 9 o'clock, Southern Ohio prepping. That's 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 Central, 7 uh, Mountain, 6 Pacific. And will uh, just and I'm pre prepping. I'm not sure. Is he, is he in at one o'clock tomorrow? I think so. Yeah, one o'clock afternoon, yeah, mountain time, mountain time, three o'clock Eastern. Then Friday, no Thursday. What's Thursday? Oh, Thursday. I have a uh, uh, Thursday talk open chat, ten o'clock in the morning, mountain time, twelve noon uh, Eastern. Good night, Howie. Friday night is, uh, is the Friday night special on Friday the 13th. Okay, Lord. Ooh, ooh, whoa. Friday the 13th. I guess I picked a kind of a good topic. What's the state of your evolution at uh, 10 o'clock mm -hmm. Eastern, 9 Central, 8 Mountain, 7 Pacific? State of my evolution. I am, ev I am evolving because I'm not living in New York or California. <laughs> Therefore, my brain continues to grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to and the state of your evolution refers to 
Are you progressing or regressing in your preparations? And then Saturday survival is which state is the best state for bug out locations and why? So everybody can has input on uh, survival Saturday for that one. That's at five o'clock uh, Mountain, uh, six Central, seven o'clock Eastern. But Julie, if I don't tell them my plans, I have no minions to help me with my plans. I need my minions. Uh, you need your minions. Ha 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 ha. See, this whole time I've been working on y'all's brains with subliminal messaging, so you'll follow me mindlessly in the future. All right, so let me throw this back up here real quick on this other side. That up. Disappear again. No, not I can disappear. We're all going to be going away here in a second. Uh oh. No, not, not in a second. In a minute here. So we're wrapping it up here. And, um, so everyone, hope you see on the next one. Soap is healing his brain. <laughs> the bottom one from Lori. <laughs> yeah, Dave, make me talk about bus. <laughs> it's working. Wait a minute. He's, he's making her talk about bus. So the uh, the soap is going to wash his brain out. So it's not working. <laughs> But I am going to take a sliver of that and put it in my fan. Yeah. That way my room smells nice and beautiful all the evening. <laughs> but there's one that I do want to get from you, and you're going to have to get me uh, get with me on email, is a potpourri one, or patchouli one, I mean, patchouli. All righty. All right, then. Uh, let me check one other quick thing here. There's that one there. And all right, uh, we're going to go ahead and end it here now, folks. Thank you much for coming by. Not too. And, and we will uh, see, you in a, see you on the next one. And I'm going to end it here with a friend. Cecilia, I will never tell. <laughs> Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. <laughs> ¶¶